Welcome to Greensboro Coliseum, side of the ACC Championship, the nation's longest running women's basketball conference championship. And soon we will crown an ACC champ. Will it be number two, NC State, or number four, Notre Dame? This is the season finale of College Game Day, live from the ACC Championship. Lego. go. College Game Day, live from Greensboro, North Carolina, is covered by State Farm. Right here in Greensboro, it's number two NC State facing number four Notre Dame, who's back in the conference title game for the first time since 2019. Both coaches, Wes Moore and Neil Ivey, will join us here on the set to preview that matchup. The tips in one hour from now as we officially say hello from the court side when we're not giving basketball analysis. Andrea Carter and myself, L. Duncan, our destiny's mild, apparently. We're going to start a girl group after this. Welcome out to Greensboro, North Carolina, where the stage has been set for the championship game here at the 2024 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. The Greensboro Coliseum is the site of it all, hosting the 47th edition of the nation's longest running basketball tournament. And man, are we in for a treat today as we get ready for the championship game in one hour between Notre Dame and NC State meeting for just the second time this season, but this time on the big stage here in Greensboro. Wes Moore and the Wolfpack trying to win their eighth ACC tournament championship. They have been on a roll and looking to continue it. They won the only regular season meeting against the Irish, but well, Notre Dame, they've got the big three. It all starts with Maddie Westbelt. You see Olivia Miles and the other women who have been such a big part of this team looking for their sixth ACC tournament championship, the first since 2019. We're breaking it all down for the next hour here on Nothing But Net. It starts right now. It's tourney time in Tournament Town, where anything can happen. As he gets it to Harden, that's for the win. It's over! Harden wins it! Notre Dame crashing the ACC party in a big way this season. Three, oh, that three, oh, baby! And oh my, what a tournament it's been. Adalgo with a magical move. Brooks right to the basket. She had not where she wanted to go. We're under the bright lights. Stars shine. Nice little hesitation, and she buried it. Mimi Collins. Defense wins championships. It's anyone's game. Put the big girl draws on it. Let's go. Everybody's hungry, and everybody wants to win. And I think this team is willing to do whatever it takes to win. This is the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament Championship. Here we go, this is what we have been working towards all week, just about an hour to go between Notre Dame and NC State. Cannot wait to see how this all plays out with two of the powerhouses in women's basketball, not just in the ACC, but across the country. As you take a look at the bracket and how these teams got here, this is what led us to Championship Sunday. These two programs have combined to win eight of the last 10 ACC tournament titles. However, this is the first time these two programs are meeting in the ACC Tournament Championship. We've got all access interviews coming your way. Sanaya Rivers standing by. She is on the court right now getting mic'd up. We will get her thoughts ahead of this matchup with Notre Dame. You know, we're going to be talking some defense with her. We're going to be talking some defense with Hannah Hidalgo as well, the freshman and ACC Player of the Year. She'll be mic'd up shortly, and we will get her thoughts about playing in the first championship game in her freshman year but right now we say hello courtside here from the Greensboro Coliseum alongside our Hall of Fame coach Muffin McGraw, Kelly Gramlich, Ivory Latta. I'm Kelsey Riggs. It's great to be with you and Kelly it is an exciting day to be here on Championship Sunday with all the great basketball we've seen so far that led us to this point. We love Championship Sunday. We <laughs> love this tournament. I think it's going to be a great final and as you said Kelsey two 
of the most historic programs in women's college basketball ever facing off today. Eight of the last 10 ACC titles and maybe the most shocking development of the day. Coach is wearing red. <laughs> <laughs> it's burgundy. It's burgundy. Oh, okay. 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 And of course, the nails are going to stay green. Oh, so, see, so you know, yeah, you got a little of I'm, both. I'm very impartial today. Obviously. <laughs> uh, I agree no, for you. You played in these and won these. What's it's it like? It's an exciting day. This is what the reason why you come to college to play in games like this. You don't you don't really sleep the night before because you're just so excited. And, you know, for both teams, I mean, they've been playing extremely well. Just to get to this point, I mean, you just got to be proud of yourself, but you also want that trophy. I I, I want three. Coach, how many you want? <laughs> I was Coach, say, how many you well, want? I, overall, back to back, back to back. Oh, you lost count. count. Okay, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> well, then I won't say the number because we're just going to keep racking them up. But what is it like today from a coach's perspective? You know, this is a great day today for both teams because you have nothing to lose. They're, they're not going to hurt their seeds if they lose this game. They're only going to help themselves if they win. So there's a little bit less pressure. Um, but, you're, of course, you're coming out to win. I mean, everybody's going to give it all they have. It's going to be a question of fatigue to me. And I think when you have that hometown crowd like they're going to have mm. here for NC State, you get a little tired and all of a sudden the crowd gets behind you, you find that extra yeah. gear. Is that going to be possible for Notre Dame? We have seen NC State's crowd come out the last two games that they have played here. You know there's going to be a lot of red in here today as we are not far away at all from Raleigh. But meanwhile, let's take a look at how NC State got here. And we're going to take you all the way back to the beginning because the Wolfpack began the season unranked in the AP poll. They were picked to finish eighth in the ACC preseason poll. But they said, who cares what y'all think? Let me show you what we're going to do. And they quickly proved the doubters wrong with two top five wins before Thanksgiving. Their highest ranking in the AP poll was the number three after defeating a total of seven AP top 25 teams this season. They entered the ACC tournament with the double bye after the second place finish and are seeking their fourth ACC title in the last five years. But let's go all access now with first team all ACC and defensive team player Sanaya Rivers who is with us now. I know she's warming up and has been listening in. Sanaya, we appreciate the time and I know that this one is special for you because you're from just a few hours away. I, I, I was talking to you earlier about three hours away. There's going to be a lot of red here, but I think there's going to be a lot of family here for you as well. What's, what are you expecting? Man, I'm excited. I'm glad to have my family here with me. Uh, these are the moments I play for. Sorry, I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them not to run you too hard before. I mean, we could have gotten you while you were stretching. I'm sorry. I knew you were going to pull through. Um, your junior year, but you weren't with NC State for the run that they made before and the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back ACC tournament titles that they won. What does it mean to you to be playing here on Sunday? Man, it, yeah, it means a lot. I'm so excited to be here with my teammates. Haven't been to ACC or a championship since my freshman year with South Carolina. So I'm excited to win this one with them. And I know that they have a history of winning some ACC championships. So I'm excited to be a part of it today. I know that defense is something that you take pride in. And I mentioned the all ACC defensive team honors. You guys were able to do such a good job with Notre Dame last time and with one of their stars, Hannah Hidalgo. What do you need to do this time to continue to contain her and contain the other star players that they have? Man, Hannah is amazing. I'm a big fan when we're not playing against each other. But um, really, she's the head of their snake, and she's their energy. So if we cut her off at the head of the snake, I think we'll be okay. Last time we went up there to play them, we definitely came out with a lot of energy on defense. So we got to make sure we bring that same energy early, and we can't let them get confident and hot. Tonight, we know we, you are always going to bring the energy for the team. We appreciate the insight and the all-access here on Nothing But Net. Good luck today. For sure. Thank you, guys. All right, so great stuff there from Sanai Rivers. And I mentioned the last time that these two teams played. That was just a few weeks ago on February 15th when they met in the regular season in a top 25 matchup. The Wolfpack, that lockdown defense propelled them to the 59-43 to win. It was the fewest points scored in a game in, since January 2004. Here's Neil Ivy about her team struggling against NC State. Very disappointed in the way we started this game. Did not feel like we were mentally here and ready for the entire game. Hats off to NC State, it's a great team. Just did not think that we had any any fight in this game for whatever reason. Disappointed, um, frustrated, trying to find a way um, to get this team to play on a consistent basis. And so that's my job as a coach 
and um, we're going to get back to work. We have an opportunity on Saturday, or excuse me, on um, Monday uh, to go up at Duke. It's going to be a super tough um, environment. We got to get better, um, and that's my focus defensively, offensively, getting our offense back, our rhythm back. Um, but I think today was just disappointing with our lack of focus mentally starting the game um, the way that we started tonight. So we got to get better, and it's my job to get us better. So that was on February 15th. They obviously scored 82 points yesterday, so that offense was definitely firing against Virginia Tech. But it's going to be tough against this NC State defense. They've been stifling this season, only giving up around 60 points per game. And they also do it without fouling, only giving up about 10 and a half free throws per game, which is the fewest in the ACC. So what does this NC State defense coach look like that causes people so many problems? Well, I think if you look at the way they guard, you know, they're going to get up on the ball, but the way they guard Hannah Hidalgo is going to be interesting. They're going to try to force her to go left. You can see the angle that the defense is taking here. She can go left, but I think she'd rather go right, so they are going to let her do that. She's going to make the pass, but here's the thing that makes NC State special. River Baldwin, she is going to step up and take a charge. She was pretty much set there when the ball went to the wing, so they've got to watch for that. And again, same thing here. Uh, what you're going to see is making her go left. She's able to make the pass to the right, but this pass to the elbow, I hate this pass. Lob, Ivory, I know you hate it too, that lob <laughs> pass. You gotta get an angle and make the bounce pass. There's the steal, again, pressure. That's how Notre Dame wants to start their offense, by getting the ball to the elbow area. They're not gonna be able to do that today. Good pressure defense. They're gonna have to find another way to enter the offense. Coach, I think River Baldwin is one of the best post players in the country at taking charges. She is elite in that area, and Baldwin was really good against them up in South Bend. What's interesting, though, is if Notre Dame goes smaller, which I think they're going to have to without Kylie Watson, does how much does Baldwin play? Do they play Mimi Collins some at the five? Because if I'm Notre Dame, I'm trying to get River Baldwin in a ball screen situation and see what she can do. She's so good at taking the charges, but when you get her out on the wing, can she stay in front of some of these quicker, smaller Notre Dame players? And, and that's exactly what I just wrote down. If I'm Hannah Hidalgo and I see that, instead of, I want them to play me left. Bring the screen out a little more because you know they're going to ice you. When they play you left, they're going to ice you. Snake the screen, and that's when she comes out, you're going against the post player, and it gives you more options. You open up the floor. You got Maddie right there. If you need a dump down or hit her with a three, sit, uh, Citrons for the three. I mean, you have more options. I think if they bring the screen out, allow them to ice you, snake it, and the sky's the limit for Hannah. Y'all, we give Hannah a lot of praise <laughs> for her defense, but Sanaya Rivers has really turned things up yes. a notch, Coach, this season. What part of her defensive game mm -hmm. is it that really stands out that creates issues she's a great anticipator but she's got such good length and she can jump she can block <laughs> shots she can beat you to the spot she can force you to go where she wants you to go she really uses her athletic ability and her size in a good way I think she's a tremendous defender she's as good at, at stealing the ball almost as good almost Not as quite good. as good as <laughs> but she's probably second in the conference in steals I think she's the second best perimeter defender in the league besides Hannah Hidalgo. And so if Hannah Hidalgo wasn't in this league, you might be looking at the defensive player of the year in Sanaya Rivers. And she has, what, seven inches on Hannah Hidalgo? So that's a really tough matchup for Hidalgo. And I know Notre Dame will have Hidalgo a bit more prepared against Sanaya Rivers and how she's going to have to handle that. And I think Hidalgo has to be ready to shoot that mid-range. When Hidalgo is playing her best, it's when she can knock down jumpers because she is a good shooter. So keeping Sanaya Rivers on by knocking down jumpers is going to be big. Hidalgo struggled against this team when they played in the regular season, only 10 points. That was the fewest she has scored in a regular season game this season. But we know that she can go off. We know that she plays defense well. She's on pace to be the second freshman in ACC history to lead the conference in scoring. But it is not just her. It's a big three for the Irish. They have scored or assisted on 139 of the team's total, 159 points in the ACC tournament. That makes up 87 points. 0.4% of the team's points, which Ivory, I mean, they're doing everything and they're yes. going to have to. You mentioned Kylie Watson. We're going to hear an official update from Coach Ivy with Angel Gray in just a little while on that. But regardless, they don't have a whole lot of depth. How important are these big three? Oh, they don't have depth pretty much at all. <laughs> so the big three is going to be the big three today. And they play so well together. But it really starts with Hannah up there at the top. Her energy that
that she brings on the defensive end. Give them opportunities to go down for the fast break. And the way Maddie is playing, to me, honestly, nobody out there on that court can stop her. And I know she has that same mentality. And once Citron gets going, it's hard to stop her as well, you know, on the offensive end. And they've been playing well together. They are undefeated when two of those big three yeah. score 20 or more. So that's <laughs> the key. If you can keep two of the big three from really playing well, that's how NC State had success up there at Notre Dame in February and how they're going to have success today. And there's also kind of the game within the game here, Coach, of do, if you play Maddie at the five, which Notre Dame <laughs> might have to if Kylie Watson is out, then what does NC State do? Do they bring River out of the game? Do they put Mimi on Maddie Westfeld? I think Maddie is a chess piece that Neil Ivey can work with. It really, uh, the big key for me is staying out of foul trouble. Oh, yeah. And that's going to be an issue if Maddie Westfeld ends up on the block. I could see them playing a lot of zone. Yeah, you but got she to. still would end up in the middle of the zone, yep. having to guard Baldwin, having to guard Collins, being around the basket trying to rebound. If any of the three really get in any kind of foul trouble, that's bad news for Notre Dame. They're riding a seven-game win streak right now. But as we mentioned, the big question mark for the Irish, Kylie Watson. We saw her go down yesterday. Just a tough injury to watch. It was obviously visibly in pain. And Neil Ivy just just a short while ago, caught up with our Angel Gray. Let's take a listen. Coach, you're on a seven-game winning streak since your loss to NC State during the regular season. How is your team different in the game plan moving forward in the championship? Yeah, I think our um, confidence is a lot higher. We learned a lot from that game. We've learned a lot this season. Um, I feel like we're peaking right now. We're gelling together, playing with cohesion and unity, which I love. Unity, your big three, is what everyone talks about. How have they played together, their chemistry, and making everyone else better on the floor as well? Well, they, they all three know that they need to score for us um, and need to be aggressive offensively. Um, Hannah does a great job of pushing pace, running the point. Maddie does that, all the little things. She's double double rebounds, and Sony's just a just tremendous scorer. So they know they have to step up for us to win, um, and they carry that weight really well. I think this is a stat you'll like. You lead the ACC in hustle plays. When you understand that and what your team has displayed throughout the season and even now, what are you most impressed about? Uh, most impressed about just our defensive mindset lately. Um, we've been really aggressive defensively, um, trying to be more disruptive. And you can tell with our with our game that we're, we're better defensively. We're just ignite, it's igniting our offense, but just the energy we're providing on defense, not, that's a great stat, and I didn't know. <laughs> Kylie Watson, we just saw her walk in with crutches. Um, what is the status update on her, and how does that change your depth as well for the game moving forward? Yeah, I mean, it was obviously an unfortunate um, um, situation yesterday. There's no, I have no news right now. We have to wait till we get back to South Bend, um, but she won't be available today. It's just one of those crushing losses, um, and we're just going to rally for her and play for her tonight. Thanks so much for your time, Coach. Thank you. You really hate to hear that about Kylie. We certainly hope that she's okay, that that MRI comes back more positive than hopefully I think many are expecting because it was such an emotional scene, especially with Liz Kitley on the sideline for that game watching it as well. Kelly, this is a team that pretty much played with seven players for a lot of the ACC season as it is. What does this do to Notre Dame not having Kylie Watson? It's a big loss. This is a massive loss for Notre Dame. She's their starting center. And frankly, you know, it's, it's so unfortunate on so many levels, but she was playing so well as as of late, it felt like she was really starting to embrace her role and understand her role for this team. And then when you look at NC State, they have a true big in River Baldwin. And so without Notre Dame, that is their true big. Nat Marshall will play a good bit for them. Nat Marshall doesn't have as much strength inside like Kylie Watson does. And I think this is a big difference. Coach, correct me if I'm wrong. Having seven players that you really feel good about <laughs> versus six, I know that sounds kind of basic. Well, yeah, you have one less player. But as a rotation goes, it's a massive difference mm. to go from seven that you really want to play to just six. It's a really big difference, especially if somebody gets two quick fouls yeah. in the first half. Now you, you have no subs on the bench, so it's a big difference and you can't you can't get anything in your rotation. You got people playing in different spots and it's it's going to be a real issue, so they've really got to be able to stay out of foul trouble. Ivory, how do you attack that if you're NC State knowing that the depth is a problem and knowing that your starting center is not there and they don't want to get in foul trouble? You just said the key word attack, attack right? <laughs> attack at all all times but at the same time NC State got to know when they come out okay they limited the players they're gonna play zone yeah so how can I still try to attack and lately NC State zone offense haven't been the best so the way they got to attack is get those rebounds get out and fast break and press the ball well, Notre Dame's been playing a lot of zone all year, so yeah. this isn't a new thing for them. They love that zone, and they play great in that zone. To have Hidalgo and Citron, two great defenders at the top, yeah. is really tough. But we always know, Coach, the big key when you're playing a zone is rebounding out of that zone as well. Yeah, it yeah. really is important to rebound. But what I would tell my team back when we had six in 2018, I said, you know what? 
Just loose defense in yes. the first half. Let's get into the second half. Yeah. Nobody's in foul trouble. Now we'll play a little more aggressive. That's the real. plan there. We'll see what Notre Dame is able to do with just that short lineup today. Obviously, the big three going to need to be even bigger in this matchup today as they get ready for the two seed in C State. One of those players from the two seed playing for the Wolfpack and playing really, really well this season. Isaiah James has continued to improve year after year and just saw a massive increase from what she was able to do last year to this this year, we're counting you down to tip off here on ACC Network between the 2024 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Championship. But we're here at the yeah. ACC Championship, Drea. So what are you most looking forward to in this matchup between Notre Dame and NC State? Well, it's so funny. CP and I are on the same page. You know, sometimes we're not on the same page, sure. but we're on the same page. Because I was also thinking about the Las Vegas Aces. You know, Kylie Watson for Notre Dame, she went down. We don't have any official word, but she's their starting center. We don't have any official word on if she's available. But whether she is available or whether she's not available, Notre Dame is looking for revenge. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame did not play well against NC State in the regular season. NC State beat Notre Dame at home. Notre Dame put up awful offensive numbers. Notre Dame's big three, Hannah Hidalgo, Sonia Citron, Maddie Westfield, they're playing so well right now. NC State has a ton of depth. Notre Dame has that big three. That's what I'm looking for. Notre Dame's big three have to be great today. They weren't in the first matchup. I want to see those three take over. It's certainly a strength versus strength. You mentioned it. Nobody shoots it better than Notre Dame in the ACC. Nobody stops shooting better than NC, NC State. State's team defense. Yeah. It, it is remarkable the way they play together. It really is. So again, NC State making its 18th appearance in the ACC title game tying North Carolina for the most all-time and Notre Dame of course is here for the seventh time in 11 seasons since joining the conference these two programs by the way they've certainly been around the block they've combined for eight of the last 10 ACC titles we'll see who will get that crown today as we get ready they're they're working on their calisthenics their band work Drea <laughs> look at that yeah, yeah that's that's good can you do that Girl, that's that 18, Girl, 19, please. 20 year old flexibility. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, we are getting ready about 52 minutes from now. Tip right here from Greensboro. And with that, we're so pleased to be joined by both of the coaches here in today's matchup. Westmore representing NC State. Of course, Neil Ivy, thank you so much for joining us. Notre Dame. We figured we'd get you guys both on the set so you could arm wrestle before the. Is that. <laughs> you're good with that? I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, she gonna, got some guns. You see those cannons? You, know, you, you see those cannons? You know, she may have trouble getting through <laughs> they, that. She may have trouble getting through the with those. I think our team tried to put them a little closer and they were like, no, nah, they're like, no, nah, we're going to stay. We're going to keep our distance. The Heisman. Yeah. I want to start with you, coach. You uh, talk about exceeding expectations in this sort of transfer portal NIL world that we live in. You took a team that was 20 and 12 last year unranked and you largely stuck with it. What informed that decision? Well, no, I mean, again, we were fortunate. We had some really good players come in the year before and felt like we had a good nucleus and, uh, you know, they played really well together. They, uh, you know, that's, that's been the biggest thing. I thought uh, this year we're really connected. They care about each other. They have fun. And uh, you play better when you're having fun. You know, Coach Neal, I'm going to go to you also speaking on expectations because I remember thinking about your team coming into the season and my expectations were all over the place. You lose Olivia Miles. She's right. not available at the beginning of the year, and you don't know if she's going to be available the rest of the year. Hannah Hidalgo is a firecracker freshman, but everybody has to figure out how to play with her. Right. How did you manage expectations, set their expectations, and now get this team to the way that they're playing today? Well, a credit to my um, my leaders, Maddie, Sony. They did a great job of leading. Um, you know, like you said, Hannah's been in the fire the entire season and not knowing if Lee was going to be back. The standard is the standard here at Notre Dame. So they knew when they came, when you come here, you, the, that standard of excellence is there. And I feel like they've done a great job all season, just growing together, learning each other, um, highs and lows, um, learning from our mistakes and um, just happy with how we're playing right now. Well, you know, we're playing these Hannah Hidalgo clips. Can you speak to her growth? from the beginning of the season to now. Yeah, she's she's grown up so much. She's literally blossoming um, in front of everyone's eyes. You know, being on this stage without having any experience, it's it's phenomenal what she's doing. Um, she just loves to compete, and um, she's a great learner. Um, she's a sponge, um, and she's just firing. Just love, I love what she's doing. Conference Defensive Player of the Year, Freshman of Amazing. the Year. She got that dog in her. <laughs> you got a dog yourself in Isaiah James. What do you make of what you've seen from her this year? Yeah, just, uh, you know, her and Sanaya both worked really hard over the summer. Uh, you know, again, I think they've improved their ability to score at all three levels, uh, but they put a lot of time into it and a lot of work. And it's neat when you see a player get rewarded for doing all that extra time. 
You know, I think in trying to win a championship, Coach, I'll go back to you as we watch Sanaya Rivers and Isaiah James, but you also need a glue player. You need someone to yeah. hold it all together. Yeah. Who is that unsung hero that's a key piece to all of these plays that we're seeing of these two players? But who's that one behind the scenes that maybe doesn't get as much credit? Yeah, I mean, I want to say really all five of our starters and then you got Zoe coming in. They've all played big roles. I nominated our whole starting lineup for all, all ACC. I mean, I just couldn't pick. I'll let the other coaches pick, but all of them have done. But I look at a, at a Madison Hayes as someone that's really a glue for us. She defends the best perimeter player a lot of times. She's big on the boards one of the top three-point shooters in the ACC. So just her ability to do a little bit of everything, I think, uh, makes her a real glue player for us. I'm watching Coach Ivy nod her head a lot. What are you telling your team? What are you telling <laughs> right, your team right. this go-around as they face NC State again? I mean, this is Championship Sunday, you know, yeah. so you got 40 minutes. Um, it's the will to win, you know, who has it more. So we're excited to be here. I'm excited as first-time head coach. I'm going against one of the Hall of Fame coaches. You know, this is an incredible atmosphere for women's basketball in the ACC, and um, we're just excited. Yeah. Well, Coach, when we gave Coach Moore an opportunity to talk about his X Factor. Who's an X Factor or an unsung hero for you? I would say um, KK Bransford. Um, mm -hmm. She's the type of player that comes in. Sometimes I have a run in the point. Sometimes she'll be a post yeah. or forward, point forward. Um, you know, she does whatever I need, and she's very, she has a very high IQ and plays with the unselfishness. And like you mentioned earlier, the big three, you know, I have to have somebody step up, and I feel like she always steps up for us. Well, your teams uh, currently have the two longest win streaks in the ACC. We mentioned that it's a strength versus strength. You're not in your head like, oh, yeah. nice. Well, because we're still here. Good to, yeah, good to know. Yeah, I mean, exactly. that's, that's a tricky one. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm hoping that you guys will do is just lay out your entire game plan for each other right here. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm not yeah, yeah. Do that at all. However, you mentioned him being a Hall of Famer. You could be in the Hall of Fame right now, Niel, in terms of your locker room celebrations. You guys both have great dances in the locker room. <laughs> Coach, any tips for Niel and the, on the dancing, or do you think she's good there as well? Oh, I've seen her. She's got moves. She's got you know, yeah. You can tell. There's a, there's a correlation to on the court to the dancing, you know. It's most, time, most of the time. There's a few exceptions. Well, again, we are just under 50 minutes from tip. Coaches, thank you so much. Yeah, good luck today. Thanks for joining right. us here on the desk, thank and you. good luck. Thanks Expecting for having a good us. one today. Exactly. Thank you, thank you so much. College game day is covered by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And in part by Wendy's, the official hamburger of the NCAA. Grab a Dave single for a buck with the Wendy's app offer. As we count down to tip-off, brought to you by Wendy's. Don't forget to order your delivery before game time. Citron's averaging 21 points per game on 52% shooting over her last four. On the other side for NC State is Zaya James. She scored 23 points on 10 of 18 shooting and grabbed nine rebounds in their semifinal win on Saturday. Going to be a good one in store from Greensboro in about 36 minutes from now. College Dame Gay coming back live from Greensboro as we punch seven Seven tickets today on Championship Sunday. Welcome back into Nothing But Net. NC State and Notre Dame meeting each other for the first time in the ACC Tournament Championship game. Mimi Collins and Wolfpack making their 18th title appearance. That ties UNC for the most in ACC history. Their head coach, Wes Moore, has a lot to do with those title appearances, and he caught up just a short time ago with our Angel Gray. Coach, this is your fourth ACC title in the last five seasons. When you're looking at the title makeup game. of the title, title game, title game, yeah. title game yeah. in the last yeah. five seasons. So when you're looking at the makeup of your roster, if you can just talk about the journey and how you've seen them evolve the most, what impresses you the most about that? Yeah, just, you know, it's a long season. And we, you know, we had a stretch recently. We played four out of five games on the road, and I think everybody was ready to bury us. And uh, obviously to start the season, the uh, expectations weren't real high. And, this team uh, ignored all that and just got to work, and they just continue to get better and better. They play really well together, share the ball, uh, really love each other, and makes it fun. Defense is a very high priority for you. Yeah. You already saw a big three with Florida State yesterday. When you're looking at now Notre Dame's big three, what's of importance for you in the execution there? Yeah, again, same thing. You know, I felt like uh, first game here. Uh, we defended real well for about the fourth quarter and uh, yesterday we really wanted to try to do it for 40 minutes and same thing as you mentioned uh, they've got a great team a lot of all-americans on that lineup and uh, uh, we're going to have to play really well again and defend and rebound defend and rebound thanks for your time coach thank you 
Angel, thanks so much. Good stuff there. One of his star players that has made a lot of improvements, Isaiah James, really stepping up in this tournament. So is Sonia Citron, who has put up impressive norm numbers as well, both improving their scoring from the regular season. Ivory, let's start with Isaiah James, because we knew she had already taken her game to the next level, increasing her scoring by nearly nine from this year to last year, and now she's taking it to another level here in Greensboro. How can she be a playmaker today? Zaya James spent numerous hours in the gym this offseason, and it shows with her team today. The, the way she scores, you know, she scores on all levels. She can cross you over behind the back. She can take you off the dribble. Her first step is the quickest I've ever seen in any other guard, and she just scores and the impact that she has. In some games, she come out, and the first half, she give you 17. She'll yeah. give you that boost of energy on the offensive end, and then everybody else follows. I mean, she can score on all areas. Both of these guards are playing with a really high level of yeah. confidence right For now. Sure. And so I think whichever one of these guards can be a bit more efficient today could be a big factor. And Citron is going to play a big role defensively. She has to stay out of foul trouble, Coach. We know that's a key. But these two players super improved and seem really locked in. Yeah, Sonny Citron, probably the most efficient player on mm -hmm. this Notre yeah. Dame team. Her shooting percentage is very good. She doesn't take any bad shots. I wish she'd take more well, shots. <laughs> I'm okay if you take a bad shot. She will not take a bad shot. In fact, just doesn't shoot enough, in my opinion. How about her leadership? How does mm. that factor in today? You know, I think she's very quiet, but she's sort of like, this all business, doing my job. Let's all just do it. Everybody relax. <laughs> Give me the ball. Let's do our job. I wish she would say, "Get me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think Isaiah James plays a big leadership role on this yeah. NC State team, and we talked about it with her. She was a freshman who did not play the last time NC State won a title. That has to be so motivating, Ivory, right? Like, you were there. You know what it takes, but you weren't really the reason. Right. And now you want to be the reason that NC State wins another time. That, that's all the confidence you need to know that the impact that you have on this team, even on the scoring and defensive end, to help your team get a championship is, is still great. All right, so we got lots more to get to here in the next half hour, but um, we've got to say goodbye to Coach just for a second. Big time. Because we're going to let the big desk over at game day borrow you. <laughs> Make sure that you come back over to Please. us. Please. We do still have more things planned. Um, L. Duncan and Andrea Carter are here right now and, and doing game day live at the same time. Before we send you off, though, I mean, with game day, you think of the fans, we you think do. of the scene, you also think of um, the signs. Yeah. And so, Coach, we made a couple signs to send you off. Mine says R, and I crossed out Hall of Famer and wrote <laughs> Defensive Dynamo! <laughs> Kelly, what does yours say? Mine says NC State has a wolf, but Notre Dame has the goat, baby. <laughs> Coach, you ready? Coach, teach me how to do the Irish G. <laughs> Let's go, Coach. Coach is going over to game day, and then she'll be back with us. We'll jiggy, 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 Yay, jiggy. Go, Yay, go, Coach. Yay, go, Coach. Yay, go, Coach. Okay, which one's the best? We're getting ready for this one, though, as we get ready to tip. In fact, let's take a look at Madison Hayes as we count down to tip off. Brought to you by Wendy's. Don't forget to order That's your delivery glue. before the glue. game time. She, you say she's the glue as we get ready for this one. What are you looking for from her, Dre? Well, I think you talk, when you talk about being glue, the hustle plays. We've seen it the entire ACC tournament. She's getting offensive rebounds. She's saving possessions. She's diving out of bounds to save the ball. And we've seen Hannah Hidalgo be great. It's just the energy that Hannah brings. She is so hard to stop. She is lightning quick. And that defensive energy that we've seen from her all season long, again, they're thinking revenge. This Notre Dame team is thinking revenge. So I'm really excited to see how Hannah plays. Hidalgo, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, leads the nation in steel. Certainly, you don't have to tell our next guest that. We're so excited to be joined by Olivia Miles of Notre Dame. And of course, she's got a statue there, Muffet McGraw, joining us as well. I know you've been so pumped to talk to your girl. Drea loves you, Olivia, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the floor. I've been waiting to talk to you all season because you know you're one of my favorite players I in the country. You, uh, you didn't know that? Yeah. Well, allow me to tell you right now, one of my favorite players, I've got to ask, how are you feeling? How's your recovery going? How's your body feeling? I'm doing great. You know, I'm pretty much cleared to go. It's just, you know, a matter of me waiting. Um, but my body feels good. My knee feels ready. You know, it's killing me that I can't be out there, but supporting them has been so great, and they're doing so well. Okay, you said you're ready to go. I heard a little rumor <laughs> that you've been on the scout team, but 
busting people's <laughs> heads. What has your mentality been being on the scout team and helping your team prepare? Yeah, I mean, I think you said it, you know, I'm just helping them, you know, prepare, you know, for the best teams, you know, like we're going to see today. And, and I've just found a newfound, you know, greatness and uh, gratefulness, sorry, for the game and, and just playing, you know, every play competitive and, and just, you know, making them better, like I said. So I want to bring Coach in here because, Coach, obviously you dealt with injuries during your time at Notre Dame. I think you joked that in 2018 you dealt with more ACLs than you had actual wins. What's the most difficult part about overcoming significant injuries to your team? I think the first thing is you have to tell your team, like, expectations didn't change. We, no matter who we lost or who's out there, we are still striving to win a national championship. And that was really the message. You can't lower your standards. You have to constantly expect more. It's just a matter of everybody's got to do a little bit more. One person doesn't need to step up and replace one person. Everybody gets two more points, two more rebounds, and that's how you do it. Yeah, Hannah, I'll go to you because as, as Coach is talking about teams having to step up and teammates having to step up, you've had front row seats to your team growing and everybody stepping up. How would you describe the transformation this season of this team? Yeah, I know. It's been incredible. You know, we've struggled with our identity early on, um, but we're really picking it up and playing great basketball at the right time. And, you know, hopefully we'll see that today again. But my team has grown through so much adversity. Um, and I'm just so proud of them and the way that, we're, that they responded and, you know, the identity that we've created so far. Seven game win streak on the line right now for Notre Dame. And I just want to talk about Niel. We just had her here on the set. You spent 17 years with her as, as coaching her and then of course as an assistant coach on her uh, your staff when you reflect upon her when you see her on the sidelines now what do you think about the most in the leadership qualities she was like a daughter to me uh -huh. ever since I got her as a as a player and she was tremendous as a player and then I watched her grow I was right with her every step of the way you know her first job was to get Skylar Diggins to say yes that's your only job <laughs> you, you don't even have to come to practice <laughs> right and then she was the best scout that we had and then she wanted to have ideas about what which we do on offense and defense just gave her opportunities to address the entire team so that they could see her growth and I, every year I was worried somebody's going to take her somebody's going to take her and then of course she was able to stay and continue the, the the legacy, I'll say it. The, the, the legacy, the legacy. Yes, I'll you, say it. You, you, you can't say it, Coach, I'll say it. No, you stand on it. You have a statue. You can stand on that. You can stand on it. <laughs> Liv, I got one more for you. Mm -hmm. All right, go back to the scout team. Mm -hmm. What's the best move you've had against your teammates? Be best oh. move, your favorite move on the floor? Uh, probably like a between the legs, behind the back, step back three. Um, and we do we do this drill called stop, score, stop. So they got to get a stop. And, you know, I scored on them, and I'm just, like, kind of happy. But, you know, it, all, it always pisses them off. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're going to need to I get a stop, score, stop <laughs> yeah. against NC State. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I love them so much. All right. Well, Olivia, thank you so much for joining. We are so excited. We just keep salivating at the prospect of you and Hannah on the same court together. Incredible. Coach Muffet, thank you so much. We'll see you on the ACC Network. And you see the fans in attendance. NC State, Notre Dame, tip just under 30 minutes from now. in March of 2000, when Greensboro hosted its first ACC Women's Tournament, Duke beat Carolina to win the conference crown. Over the next decade, this town was usually painted a shade of blue by the end of the week. But starting in 2014, Notre Dame won four straight. Then recently Louisville, NC State, and now Virginia Tech have joined the mix to take over Tournament Town. It has been quite the takeover for sure. You see Fan Fest, another place where it's been popping. Lots of people there, but a lot of people crowded in now as we get ready for this big game, the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. Y'all became the first basketball tournament, women's basketball conference tournament in the country to surpass 1.5 million fans this week. They, of course, got to honor a special fan, and now we get to honor a special guest as we have Dr. Jim Phillips, the commissioner, here on set with us. Always such a great supporter of women's basketball and women's sports in general. And, Commissioner, I mentioned the fans that have been here, this atmosphere. We've seen it all week with these NC State fans. It felt like the other Castle Coliseum for Virginia Tech, and we mentioned the 1.5 million and what's it like to have this kind of support surrounding the ACC tournament? It's been incredible. First, I want to thank the three of you and Coach, who I know is off busy doing something else. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job of showing the entire country how good ACC women's basketball is. But, you know, there's a few thanks, Kels, to, to start out our conversation um, today. First, the city of Greensboro. These people really are so committed and dedicated uh, 
the, the volunteers that it takes to put on a tournament like this, the love and passion that you feel, whether you're entering and parking your car or you're going to a concession stand or you're going through security, these people really get it. So I want to say thank you first and foremost to the city of Greensboro. It's the 24th time in the last 25 years that, that we've been here. Ally, you know, you want to tell your story in a big way, but you need somebody that champion that story. And that's what Ally has done. So Andrew Brimmer and the people at Ally have allowed us to really elevate showcasing um, this incredible tournament. And then the level of play is just at, at the very top of the country. It's not even debatable. The coaching, the individual players, the, 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 certainly the teams. Uh, it's been a brilliant five days here in Greensboro. It's so funny you say that, Kamish, because there's someone beside, behind you holding up a sign that says Invest in Women with the Ally logo mm -hmm. on it, which I just I love to see. And that's what the ACC has done for its entire existence. And coming into this tournament, nine teams already in the big dance without even playing games. It's unbelievable what this league has done. How much fun has it been for you as a women's basketball fan to watch how good this league is? It's been incredible. I say thank you to both of you and all those that put yeah. the jersey on prior to these women having a chance because if you don't do what you did and if you didn't have the coaching and the support we don't get to this day today so thanks to the both of you um, I won't talk about the shooting contest because <laughs> I know you've already had, had a chance to do that uh, but but that that's what it's been about and um, nine teams as you said uh, We've had eight the last five years. Yeah. We will have nine this year. Crazy. I'm, I'm more concerned that the committee gets it right about who hosts. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think we have a bunch of teams that deserve to host. Think about the players mm -hmm. as well. Elizabeth Kitley. Have we seen a better player mm -hmm. over that span? Three-year ACC Player of the Year. <laughs> Mount National Rushmore. Player of the Year yeah. candidate, et cetera. Hannah Hidalgo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Freshman of the Year. Electric. And Daisha Fair is yeah. one of the best players that is so underrated at Syracuse that yeah. nobody has talked nearly enough. You three have and Coach has. But incredible. And then I really enjoyed this year having a chance to tell Coach Jack that she won the ACC oh, yeah. really cool. 2023-24 Coach of the Year. Why? Because this history of ACC basketball is dominated by um, amazing coaches. And she just put herself with that category of just incredible leaders in our past. Well, let me say this first. Your tie is amazing. <laughs> Love it. Love the <laughs> colors. <laughs> Everything <laughs> is great. No, but we know you're a busy. We, yeah. we know you're a busy guy. You're here to see the championship game. After this, you go into Chapel Hill to wrestling. Then after that, you go into the men's uh, ACC tournament. Yeah. Are you really enjoying yourself? Because it looks like I can feel the energy right now. I love it. <laughs> are they still partying in Chapel Hill when I get there tonight? I think, I think a, they are. On are. The a, that was a heck of a men's game. <laughs> but um, I'm excited. Just as I am to be here today, I'm honored. I feel very blessed to be in this role. But I'll be fired up when I go to Chapel Hill as well yeah. to, to crown the ACC 2023-24 wrestling champion. Yep. I mean, those student athletes are committed just like our 10,000 across our 28 sports. And then next week, as you described, we'll have a chance to go to D.C. And I think people are sleeping on our men's teams as well when, it get, when, when we get to selection uh, Sunday. And I hope that... Uh, people recognize we have six or seven teams that absolutely should be strongly considered yep. and be in that NCAA tournament when it's uh, when it's announced. But again, it's been a great regular season. We've had one great championship, and this will be an amazing game yeah. today between two juggernauts, and we'll look forward to next week as well. We can't wait to see what happens in D.C. I know you will enjoy Chapel Hill. You'll have to let us know if they shut down Franklin Street or not, if it's <laughs> it's open yet, what's going on there, because it was definitely a scene last night. Commission, we appreciate the time, as always, and we'll see you shortly on the road again. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we'll see you t today after for the game as well, not just an hour pre-game show, an hour post-game show, breaking down the action from today. We'll have reaction from the winning coaches and players right here on ACC Network, so make sure you flip right over. But right now, don't go anywhere, because we've got the ACC Freshman of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Hannah Hidalgo standing by. Just under 30 minutes to go before game time here on ACC Network and actual game time ESPN. Oh. <laughs>
Welcome back into Nothing But Net. Counting you down to tip off game being played over on ESPN, but we'll be with you afterwards right here on ACC Network. And Hannah Hidalgo, man, she has put on a show for the country with two steals in that semifinal win. She set the Division One steals record for a freshman with 145. And we're still counting. We're not done yet. But what is the art of a steal? What and how does she do it so well? Well, earlier this season, she caught up with landscape writer Sean Hurd to discuss. Freshman that everybody in college hoops talking about Hannah Hidalgo. There's not much his freshman cannot do. Fearless is the best way to describe number three. Here with Notre Dame freshman sensation Hannah Hidalgo. Uh, Hannah is here to talk some defense with us. Uh, she's one of the best pickpockets in the nation. Hidalgo with the steal, and she'll take it in for the easy two. She loves playing defense. She just seems to bait the ball handler somehow. What are the things that you're looking at? I obviously look at the ball, see if like, when I can time it. Um, and then I also watch the ways. My dad always taught me growing up when I'm playing defense, just watch the ways. Don't look at the eyes because the eyes can be deceiving. You can be looking that way and then pass the ball this way. So watch, watch the ways and just like watching the ball, make sure like when I get time. What's the moment that you're looking for to make your move and, and try and pick the ball up? When I time it is when they rise up to make a move, and then that's when I put my hand down. So and like they, right, right here, and them. then I yep. go. Okay. So right, right when they rise up is when I put my hand down. And I, when you're kind of deciding how you're going to beat, uh, beat a ball handler to the spot, um, what's going through your head? So if you're going this way, yeah. I just put my, my whole body like, yeah. and kind of, I kind of bump a little bit. So like, don't use my hands because the wrestler obviously, obviously calls that. So yeah. I kind of like use my body to kind of bump and make you go back that way. And then yeah. when I feel you're about to put the ball now behind your back is when I go and reach there. And now I go so, and I'm off. Yep, so right, put my body there. Now you have to change directions and that's when I go. She takes and gambles at times, but they're good ones. It's heart crushing when you, like, I get to steal on somebody and then I go score and then I'm right back up on them. It makes them, you know, really uncomfortable. But I think it really just helps, uh, like, bring us, give that energy. So when I get a stop and now I'm all aggressive and I'm picking up 94 feet, it gives energy to the whole team. All right, let's go all access with ACC freshman and defensive player of the year, Hannah Hidalgo, who is on the court now. I've seen her over there knocking down some threes in the corner and going through some of those warm-up drills. This is your first ACC tournament and your first championship game. Can you take me inside your head right now? What's important for you to focus on? Yeah, just uh, I know we're low on numbers, so just being smart, especially on defense and not picking up any early fouls, and just bringing energy from the jump. Playing smart, but you know, still playing aggressive. You mentioned defense, and I know it's something that you pride yourself on, something that you really thrive on, and there have a lot of talented players on NC State. What can you do to try and limit and slow down the Wolfpack? Yeah, just contain. Just contain. Just be smart. No go for reaches, especially in the backcourt. And just playing smart, not playing with my hands, and just containing them. Hannah, you're so good on defense, but you're also such a dynamic scorer and playmaker. And last time against NC State, they were able to really try and contain you more than other teams. What did you see from the tape that you can do differently and try to take advantage of? Yeah, I think just snaking. Uh, they, they iced me a lot on the left-hand side. So just using my left hand more, snaking, and then just getting my teammates open, just getting them hot. I just want you to know my analysts up here are dancing and high-fiving, and they, <laughs> they liked your answer on that one, Hannah. So I know you got a couple of other things to focus on. We appreciate the time and good luck today in this championship game. Yes, thank you. There we go, Boo. Come with me. All right, so Coach Muffin McGraw back with us now. Um, go ahead. I recall it. She cannot be a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> she cannot. You can tell by her response, not because, you know, I said it. She is watching film. Yeah. She yes. studied how they played her, and she probably figured it out. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Her coach helped her, but she's a smart enough guard to realize, okay, they play me love. I have the snake. The I art tell, of tell the, the snake. Is what that is. Yes. The art of the snake is when someone <laughs> comes up and set a screen, you have the ability to snake it like a little, like that, like a little snake, dribble to the right, and go down here. It's like yeah. a little snake, you know. It, it's kind of hard to explain. You just so, got to yeah. do it. I you're, thought you were going doing a really good the, job. The, it's hedging, <laughs> yeah. and you're your defender, it. so you're splitting the you're defense, splitting. basically. Yeah. Split that double team. It is yeah. like a snake, though. It is. <laughs> and she did that. The Louisville game, when she was so good on the ball screen, yes. she snaked the heck <laughs> out of Louisville. And she was so good in the ball screen in that situation. I think she's really improved yes. in handling ball screen defense. That's going to be great to see her out there. But like she said, yeah. I, I can't do it in the first half, maybe. Right. Not in the backcourt. i got to pick my spots. That's and smart. That's, that's what smart. she's going to do. 
Uh, she is such a great player. And Coach, wait, before we go to this, I, you left us for a little while. I just want to know, <laughs> would you rather be sitting here with us or coaching a potential national Ooh. freshman of the year? Oh, I'd rather be here. No question about it. I got a front row seat to watch, and I don't have to worry about anything else but having a great sure time. We lost you for a little while. She's a great player. I just wanted to know where your head was at you know, before this game as well. I was well. walking through the coaching box right in front of the bench, and I was like, well, I, I feel pretty comfortable over here, too. Good. But, but this is good. Oh, wow. I'm comfortable over there, but better over here. Good, good, good. That's what we want to hear. Um, I mentioned she's in the conversation for National Freshman of the Year. It is her and Juju Watkins, really a two-person race right now, and both of them have really been impressive. I mean, the game is in such good hands. They both rank top three nationally in scoring. Hannah Hidalgo also leads the nation in steals per game. That's what really separates her, Kelly, it seems, because she has that extra juice on defense as well. It's tough because Juju has been putting up incredible numbers. I think the way Hidalgo impacts everything, she would be my national freshman of the year. And we're going to start with some defense here. Her on-ball defense is just relentless. She is all over Georgia Amor, who, by the way, is one of the best players in the country. Georgia Amor gets a little separation, but who's there? Maddie Westfeld in help side, and Hidalgo leads her right into the help side, which is what you want. Here's another example defensively. She's picking up Georgia Amor on the other side of the logo. It's just exhausting to have to play against someone like this who goes so hard defensively. She's able to stay with her and then leads her right into the middle, into the help side <laughs> defense. Westfeld is there, but also Hidalgo is her own help side defense. <laughs> She's able to get in the passing lanes and steal this ball. Just incredible. And then Notre Dame off to the races. But also, of course, Han Hidalgo can play some offense. And here's an example of her in that ball screen offense. Notre Dame's going to switch this cleanly. So no snake because they're going to switch it. So Olivia Cochran is on Hannah Hidalgo. Cochran has size. Hidalgo has speed. Hidalgo hits her with this crossover right here. Oh, my goodness. Creates enough separation to knock down the mid-range. And then this is an example of her snake in the screen. And they're icing her as well. So she goes opposite. She doesn't use the screen. Hits him with a jab. So Bajetti is off balance. And then she weaves through the defense here. Gets through three different Florida State defenders and just uses her speed to get to the rim. And how about that finish over Michaela Timpson, the best shot blocker in the ACC. So this is a special talent, a special player. It is shocking that she is a freshman. She's going to have to be smarter today with her fouls, no doubt about it. But I'm expecting a big game from Hannah Hidalgo in the big moment. You see those numbers she's putting up. Could be the second freshman over the last 25 seasons to average 25 and 5. The, the only other one? other one to do it? Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark, who Unreal. we know what she has gone on. <laughs> to do and become and Hannah Hidalgo coach well on her way. I, I mean, you've coached a lot of great players and I know know a lot about Hannah Hidalgo on a personal and a, a basketball level. What does she bring to the game of basketball as we talk about this National Player of the Year conversation? Well, you know, you normally try to take pressure off a of freshman and you definitely are going to watch a lot of film. I watched the game from the point guard position. I'm sure Neil Ivey's out at half court in her ear on every possession, but to have a player that's this smart. Yeah. She mm. is so intelligent. She really, she loves to study the game. She watches a lot of film. She's the one that's that's really always trying to learn. She wants to be a sponge. She's got skills. She knows that, but she wants to be even better. She got the it factor. She got what it takes. She has what it takes to be that. She's my national freshman of the year, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. She really is. Yeah. She not only impacts it on the defense, she impacts the whole game, period. Offense, defense, and what I love about it, she has great body in, body energy, body great body language. And she cheers for her teammates. If they do something great, she gets so hyped. It's like she wants everybody around her to be great, and she's great herself. Her passion is on another yes. level as well. Oh, the God. intensity, <laughs> and sometimes freshmen don't understand the intensity you have to play with to win, but it's like she was born <laughs> with that intensity. And Coach, I'm glad you bring up her IQ. She is so smart to be able to do what she does offensively and defensively as an 18-year-old. And I would say much harder to come into a college as a point guard. Yes. You have yeah. so much responsibility on you, so much more to learn. And I think a little easier for Juju Watkins to just come in, be on the game, be on the wing a little bit. Uh, so she's picking up more responsibility and doing a great job of it. Ivory, you came in with high expectations for yourself, with the, the country having high expectations for you. And in the ACC tournament, 
performed very well. Three-time ACC tournament MVP, only one able to do that. Coach mentioned the pressure, and as a freshman for her, especially knowing you've only got six people that can play in this game for Notre Dame, how do you manage that? She is handling it very well. I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't think I could. Yeah. I really don't think I could. The way that she's doing and the way she spoke, like, hey, she has the game plan. I can't. I, I still want to be aggressive, but I can't foul. I know how important I am to this team. I cannot get in foul trouble. And like Coach said, she's like you said, she's so smart. She studied the game. She's looked at film. She know what she has to do in order for her to be successful on that ball screen. And like you say, Kelly, once she gets to that free throw line and hit that 15 footer, it's gonna open out so much for her. It is. Kelly, the other thing that I just saw, Olivia Miles walked into frame for a second yeah. there. And I know she's oh. not making an impact on the court, but how much does having her in Hannah's ear in those meetings and those sideline conversations help potentially desire to Really important. We talked to Maddie Westfeld about this yesterday, that Olivia Miles has been super involved with the team this season, with Hannah Hidalgo, trying to impart some wisdom, and how she's been running the scout team. Now, that <laughs> is an interesting nugget. I feel like since Olivia Miles started running the scout team, Notre Dame's been playing really well. I mean, what better practice for Hannah Hidalgo to have to guard Olivia Miles and deal with all that she does and then translate that to the game. And Neil Ivey like said it. This We're focused on this year. Next year, it's going to be a movie for Notre Dame. I cannot wait to see these two play together. <laughs> Olivia Miles is just talking about how the team gets mad at her at practice yes. because they're going to have to run because they can't get enough stops. And she's like, I, I'm not stopping my game. I'm, I'm going to make you guys run. And she is definitely adding a lot. She can be any player in the league. Wow. And this is what True. you're going to see. Coach, another player that we've been so impressed with this year that plays for NC State, a freshman, is Zoe Brooks, who has come in and made a big impact, found her role on this team. We got to talk to her the other day. How can she come out today and really make an impact? The thing I love about her is her poker face. I mean, she just <laughs> yes. doesn't seem to have any emotion. You know, you want some good emotion, and she has that, but she is just so steady, so calm, so poised for a freshman. Mm. She really is. And she's not asked to do as much as Hannah Hidalgo, yeah. but Zoe Brooks has really shined in her role this year to come off the bench, bring some offense, have that poise down the stretch. She's shooting the ball well, great distributor. It feels like she just fit in perfectly with this group. And to have her, that's what Notre Dame doesn't have in this game. They don't have the punch off the bench. Without Kylie Watson, you can't bring Nat Marshall off the bench. She's going to start. NC State does. They have kind of a different wrinkle they can throw in there with Zoe Brooks. Zoe Brooks knows her role. She knows exactly what to do when she gets in the game. She don't want to put too much pressure on herself. She doesn't really have to when you got Isaiah James to score. But she can also score at will. Also, she should come in. She runs the offense. She just knows her role and do what she has to do. I want to go back to River Baldwin because, Kelly, you touched briefly on it earlier in the show, what she was able to do in this last game when they played Notre Dame. How does she come in and really set the pace? I mean, are we going to see her taking more charges and, and, and going at it, or, or what do you think? She She's the best charge taker from the post <laughs> position that I've seen in the ACC this season. And I think it's a really interesting balance between these coaches of how much River Baldwin plays and what her role is. Because if I'm NC State, obviously I'm starting River Baldwin, and I am forcing them to have to guard her. I'm gonna, I would say River Baldwin gets that first touch. Mm. Make Nat Marshall guard her because, first of all, River Baldwin has a size advantage, but secondly, Notre Dame has Nat Marshall, and that's about it. Becky Abinwa, we should say, she is on the roster. She's been in concussion protocol and has barely played. That could be a player that Notre Dame could use. But I think you go to Baldwin early and you make Notre Dame guard her. It'd be interesting to see if they try to double team her. That can take away foul trouble if you come and bring a guard down. Just make a little bit yeah. of a trap, make her get out of it, because they're going to have to prevent her from getting the ball. Once River Baldwin gets it, I don't think Matt Marsh is going to be able to stop her from scoring. Yeah, I agree with you. That's the first play. Go at her. Go see at her. If you, hey, see what you can do as far as foul trouble. And then if I do send a guard down, I don't. I definitely want to sit Hannah because Hannah can get a little aggressive. <laughs> She'd be trying to slap at all the balls and try to get all the steals. Send somebody else. Don't sit Hannah. <laughs> we are about 11 minutes away from tip-off. The game going to be over on ESPN. But as I mentioned, we'll be back with you for an hour long afterwards right here on ACC Network for all the reaction and the winner sound with the uh, post game. But uh, let's talk about some X factors in this game that could determine who's going to be sitting here on this desk with us afterwards. And Coach, let's start with you. What's the X factor in tonight's game? Well, you know the big three of Notre Dame are going to have to be out there. But I think for me, the X factor will be Anna DeWolf. She came up big yesterday. 
hit some threes, did a good job defensively. She's somebody they're going to have to rely on today. My X factor is that woman right there, Sanaya Rivers, mm. who we spoke to earlier. To me, she is maybe the second best defender in the league outside of Hannah Hidalgo from a guard position. She also is built to be able to slow down Hannah Hidalgo. She's 6'1". We were talking to her before we went on air. She's huge. She has great <laughs> length great speed and she already has had a game where she's been successful on Hannah Hidalgo and the thing with NC State as a whole they are such a good defensive team they are really smart they have a 13.5 percent foul rate they only foul on 13 percent of possessions so it's really hard to get uh, NC State in foul trouble I think that's going to be a key yeah my expert is Zoe Brooks uh, she just needs to come in the game and be poised run the offense don't do too much you have an opportunity to score take it but also help Get, get down and dirty on the defensive end. Create opportunities for your team so y'all can get out of that fast break. And just be yourself, stay poised, and run the team. Because you mentioned earlier that neither of these teams really have anything to lose because you're right. in a great spot in the NCAA tournament. But is there one team that has more pressure heading into today? You know, I, I think that there's little pressure on both teams. They, they're coming in knowing we're at least a three seed. I, I think Notre Dame's a three seed, NC State could be a two. So there's a, you know, a little movement. But the two, three games, just a different color uniform. I don't think there's a lot of pressure on either team. I agree. Maybe just because there's so much red in this building, these NC State fans are going <laughs> to want a lot yeah. from this team. Notre Dame can take on that underdog role, especially with Watson's injury. So maybe a little more pressure on NC State. Well, you know who there's pressure on right now? You guys, because it's time for Come our on, Jenny. ACC trivia question oh, of the day boy. from our researcher, Jenny. And let's see what she got. Did you guys beat her yesterday? No, Did we Jenny, win? Jenny be telling her all the answers. <laughs> What's the lowest ACC preseason ranking a team had who went on to win the conference tournament? Okay, I think the answer is Clemson in 99. But I don't know if they were fifth or sixth. This is ridiculously tricky to put fifth and sixth on here. <laughs> I'm going to take Ivory strategy. Go with A. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with B. <laughs> I'm going to go with C. <laughs> the thing is, it's really Jenny versus Kelly, and Kelly is just coming out here and crushing it as we get ready now for the anthem. Going to break right now. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Certainly she could earn some flowers. Can we give out a few more flowers very quickly to who we feel are just maybe stories that didn't get enough attention. I want to go with Maddie Booker, co-Big 12 Ooh, Player of the Year. The first that's freshman to win that's the award. One. It looked like Texas was out. When, of course, Rory Harmon went down and she steadied the shit. Here's your flower. I'm going to go Syracuse coach Felicia Leggett. Jack, I feel like, you know, Syracuse, they were doubted early in the season. Coach, you get a flower. How about to you the freshmen? Juju Watkins, you get a flower. Hannah Hidalgo, you get a flower. Malaysia, you get a flower. All the seniors trying to decide if they're going to go to the league. You get a flower. Stay in college, y'all get flowers because that's a really tough decision. How about Paige Beckers? You get one, too. Big East player of the year. Flower. Oh, Eighth player Liz to win the award multiple times. Liz Kitley, we hope to see you back on the floor. Senior, we hope to see you back. You get a flower. <laughs> Hannah Hidalgo, you get a flower. You're a dog, Hannah Hidalgo. We love you. You've been so much fun to watch. We've got much more coming up, including our game picks as we close things out on College Game Day. Still ahead. We ruined your flowers, Madri. You're watching College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Player or coaching staff? Shay DeWire. Lachey DeWire. That's the best trash talk on the team. She's like, what, probably the second shortest person on the team. She's just going around just bumping people. Definitely coaching staff. Probably Coach Tia. None of them. They should never be talking trash. No. Cameron Taylor. She puts the hand movement and the body language into it. People don't think so, but it is me. I have a lot to say. The best trash talker is Coach Brooks when he tells me what to say. Elise Williams. Probably me. It's really quick and off the cuff and just funny in general that you kind of enjoy her trash talking. <laughs> we have a lot. I talk a lot of trash. Kayla McPherson. She loves to get the other team kind of riled up. Definitely Hannah Hidalgo. She's just such a force on defense. It elevates our whole team. Hannah is a great trash talker because she can back it up. If she needs to chirp a little bit while she's there, you're definitely going to hear it. She's definitely going to have something to say. <laughs> 
Counting you down to tip off here. Who's the best trash talker on this desk? <clears throat> Me. Ivory. It's not you. Ivory, Ivory. I take, I take pride. I, I, I talk trash to Jenny because she will never stop me in trivia. My initial Ever. reaction was you, but I think it but might no, be Coach. No, it is Coach. It's Coach be coming at me. It's Coach. It's she Coach. is sneaky. Uh, we're not going to talk any trash right now. We're going to talk about this game and talk about what we are about to see. There is a lot of red here as the lights are down low at NC State and Notre Dame are just about three minutes away from going head to head. Ivory, what are you looking for right out the gate? Oh, I'm looking for some intense defense. Definitely from Hannah Hidalgo and looking for, you know, Sonata Rivers to really just step it up on the scoring end. We talked so much about her defense. I think she's going to have a big performance on the scoring. Notre Dame has to get off to a good start. Last yeah. time they played NC State, they did not. And you can't get down early with this crowd yeah. in this building. You cannot afford to let that happen. And if I'm Notre Dame, or if I'm NC State, excuse me, I'm going right at Notre Dame, knowing they have six players they want to play. Go to River Baldwin early, see if you can get an early foul. Yeah, I think that's a great game plan. You know, I was always the most nervous right now. Yes. The national anthem, then the starting lineups. I'm like, just get the game going. <laughs> I want to see what they're going to do. Are they in the man? Are they in zone? What are we going to do? How are we going to react? Is the ball screen going to work? So many things running through my head. So I've got a play call for the very first play. We're going to run a pick and roll, get River Baldwin in it, and see what happens. Yeah. You weren't kneeling at this point yet, I right? You were already yet. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> just, just making sure. I was wondering where we were at and, and the coach stance at this point as you see the starting lineups being announced right now for Notre Dame. This team on a seven game win streak heading into this game and looking to win their sixth ACC tournament championship making their seventh finals appearance. NC State making their 18th title game appearance tying UNC for the most in ACC history and with the win would get their, ace, their eighth ACC tournament championship. Let's make some picks though. We've got the two seed and the four seed going head to head. Coach, you're wearing, as you say, a burgundy jacket, but you have green nails. <laughs> Who are we going with? I gotta go with the nails. I, I think I'm going with the Irish, of course. It's gonna be a tough game, though. It's a tough pick. Both teams playing really well, but I'm going with the Irish. She has green blood, Kelsey Britt. <laughs> For NC State, I think you gotta attack, get Notre Dame in foul trouble, bother Hidalgo with the link, take care of the ball. For Notre Dame, I think they have to make some threes if yep. they're gonna give up some layups with that foul trouble. And Notre Dame, get on transition, be your Yourself. That being said, I think NC State's depth and their defensive intensity wins out. I'm going with the pack. I'm going with the pack as well. I think NC State really needs to use their their length in this game as much as possible and try to get everybody on the team in foul trouble. <laughs> How about that? I know there is no Kylie Watson and there is only six players, but it is hard to bet against the big three with Notre Dame. Such dynamic playmakers, and we've seen they've already scored 87% of the buckets. That being said, those six players worry me. I gotta go oh, with the Wolf Pack in this one. I think <laughs> they come in and lock in another one. We'll see you for a post-game show, hour long, right here on ACC Network. Enjoy the game, on ESPN. All right, what about right here, ACC Championship? Uh, this is, I'm gonna make you go first. Okay, I'll go first between Notre Dame and NC State. Hannah Hidalgo had her worst shooting game of the season last time against them. They scored, what, 43 points in that game? I think she's gonna, I think she's gonna go off. I think it's gonna be Notre Dame. Yeah, this one's tough. You know, I think about NC State and their depth and their defensive energy, but then I think about Notre Dame, and again, the revenge factor. Hannah Hidalgo is such a force. I don't know, I can't pick. We're up against the clock. I, I feel like we're getting, now that's a cop out. If I had no, to no, decide, no, 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 no. I would probably say say, yeah, I don't know. Enjoy the game. That does it for college. Thank you. Thank you, Drea and Elle, and what an atmosphere it is. The ACC Championship game, Hannah Hidalgo and Notre Dame getting ready to take on Isaiah James and the Pack. You are watching ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This league is so tough. Playing for keys every day of the week. I'm seeing the goal, I'm seeing the glory, I'm seeing the great. This time of year, survive in advance. I want to win every game, not satisfied. I won't back down. Now, I'm coming for the crown. It's now or never. I just love competition. How about that? There she goes. So crafty. I'm not sure either team can stop the other. It's going to be rocking in here. Now or never. Welcome to the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. 
It is Championship Sunday, and there are a lot of people in the house. It is loud in here as the women's tournament comes to the championship game. Both Notre Dame and NC State had convincing wins yesterday in the semifinals, and now we are getting ready to tip off to see who will be the 2024 ACC champion. And we welcome you to Greensboro, Pam Ward, along with Deb Antonelli, who played her college ball sharpshooter at NC State and Florida State's own Angel Gray will be joining us on the sideline shortly. Very exciting time of year and excitement in this game. Both teams coming in hot. Yeah, Pam, I mean, this league is projected to get nine seeds. They've been the solid league all season, and these are the two best teams at the right time playing for the title, so this is going to be fun. And what also is fun is being able to watch how the Wolfpack are clicking together, particularly Isaiah James. Isaiah James is a part of the balance at NC State. They've got five players that average in double figures, so they have a lot of scoring power. But when she has the ball in her hands, she can get to the rim. She can pull up into mid-range. She's got three-point range as well. She knows how to help make others better on her penetration. She can really fill it up, and she's playing well here. And the numbers show it. Those are just for these two tournament games. She was a first-team All-ACC performer. For more on Notre Dame, they're on a seven-game win streak. Last time they lost was to NC State. Let's go over to Angel. Yes, ladies, and during that seven-game win streak, Neil Ivy told me it's because of her team's synergy and focus has been elite since their last loss against the Wolfpack. She said it comes down to their big three. Sonia Citron, Hannah Hidalgo, and Maddie Westbell have been unbelievable in this tournament, but throughout this entire season, they've been great. They account for 63% of Notre Dame scoring this season. They are 7-0 when at least two of the big three score 20 or more points. They do have an even shorter bench with Kylie Watson having the injury in last night's game. However, this big three is a nightmare for any opposing defense. We'll see what the Notre with North NC State has for today. Yeah, certainly they are a handful, and Notre Dame needs them to come up big. As you mentioned today, Notre Dame is down to just seven players in uniform. You mentioned Kylie Watson. She went down with a left knee injury yesterday in the semi. We'll have an MRI tomorrow. And Becky Abinma will not be available again. She is in concussion protocol. And there's a look at Kylie Watson went down late in the third quarter. So the Irish going to have to do it with very few players, but it helps when one of them is Hannah Hidalgo. Well, Hidalgo has been so spectacular all season. She can stuff the stat sheet. She understands tempo at a young age. And they're going to have to deal with River Baldwin at the beginning because NC State's going to try to get her established early. And remember, NC State won the first meeting between these two in South Bend. And they won that game convincingly. Nat Marshall, who will be starting for Watson, took the opening tip for... Notre Dame, but it's controlled by the pack. When you play Notre Dame, you got to prepare for man and zone, Pam. And Notre Dame played about 50% of their possessions man and zone against NC State the first time. Sanaya Rivers starts things off with the bucket. Here is the starting lineup. The big three. Anna DeWolf had big threes at the end of the semifinal game yesterday. And Nat Marshall coming in off the bench to start for Kylie Watson. At the post position, there's a collision between two players and that induces a backcourt violation. NC State starting lineup as Deb mentioned they have a lot of people in double figures every starter averaging in double figures. Mimi Collins had a huge start to the game yesterday joined by James Rivers Hayes and Baldwin. NC State coming in as the number two seed, started off the season 14-0, went from unranked to a top 10 team. And here's the zone, 27 possessions of man as Mimi Collins sticks the triple. 25 possessions of zone according to Synergy in the first matchup, so there's the balance that Neil Ivey has on the defensive end. Collins starting off today like she did yesterday with a shot from the outside, Sonia Citron has had a terrific ACC tournament. They need her to be hot. And she is a, one cool customer out there. She is so good at go, getting her defender below the level of the screen, and that screen gets deeper to the elbow, and then she's got a short range jump shot. The miss taken by Hidalgo, who is a terrific rebounding guard, second on this team overall in boards behind Maddie Westbell. NC State held Hildago to 10 points the first time they met. It was her lowest scoring, or tied her lowest scoring output, and zero assists. 
Yeah, so it was a convincing win on February 15th when NC State won 59-43. Fewest points Notre Dame has scored against a ranked team since 2004. And they're 43 points, lowest home game scoring for the Irish this year. Rivers, good look. Does not get the bounce, but James, who is everywhere in the left, he puts it back in. James, second and most improved player balloting this year to Leah Tu King, who had a fantastic season for Pitt. I would go right back to that same play. Here comes that middle ball screen. And watch Marshall, this time she pops. Up the extent of her range, it rims in and out. Rivers brings the ball up. Playing the point guard position for this team, even though that's not her natural position. James with a little step back over Marshall. Boy, if she gets hot, watch out. And she's seeing a big basket early. Westfeld has to pick herself up. Citron. Wow. Oh, oh, here comes Sonia Citron. Scores NC State 9, Sonia Citron 7. Yeah, she is so solid. I mean, she can impact the game in a lot of ways as well. And she'll never change her expression. No. Unflappable. Whether she hits a game winner, maybe you'll get a smile if she hits a game winner. But other than that, she's very even, which is a contrast to Hannah Hidalgo, who can be very demonstrative out on the court. Baldwin gives him a second chance. Hey, River Baldwin had a double-double the first time. Ten boards to go along, 14 points on the block. Citron hunts it down. Hidalgo had her worst offensive performance of the year against NC State in the regular season. Citron misses. NC State ball. Watch that screen right here by Marshall. She's done a great job with Sony Citron. A couple of buckets have been off the Marshall screens, and then James with a step back. James off to a good start. Gets it over to Baldwin, probably, and certainly in hindsight should have shot that. Citron going all the way with a step through, and Marshall couldn't hang on to the rebound. Neil Ivey in her fourth year as the head coach, was the ACC Coach of the Year last year for the Fighting Irish. Won a national championship under Muffet McGraw, both as a player and an assistant coach. James guarded by Hidalgo, who leads the nation in steals. And is an absolute pest out there on the perimeter. James, terrific head fake. Marshall stayed with her, though. I don't know about that shot. I don't think Westmore is going to like that one. Hidalgo's first shot of the game. Got it! When your shot selection turns into transition opportunities for the other team, you know it's not a good shot. It's a good sign for Irish fans, because again, Hidalgo really struggled. Four of 19 from the floor in that regular season loss to the pack in February. NC State's got to get inside the zone. They've been playing around the outside of it, and now the ball goes to the short corner, and we see the trap. A nice wrinkle for Neil Ivey. Trying to come up with some sort of a solution to slow down this NC State team. Westmore, three-time ACC Coach of the Year in his 11th season. NC State's been here four of the last five years, and they've won three of them. Last year, they didn't make it to the championship. Madison Hayes knocks down the three. And Wes Moore is 3-0 in championship games in the ACC tournament. Notre Dame has only lost once in the title game. That was in 2018 when they fell to Louisville by two points. Hidalgo, nifty stuff. And they want to make her go left. They feel she's less dangerous that way. But that's how good she is. She's crafty and she's creative. She sees the second level very well. Freshman of the year in the ACC. Rivers, a little bit too strong, but Baldwin able to board it and get another shot off. Citron kept it going. DeWolf, the Fordham transfer. <laughs> NC State's given up some good looks in transition. They're going to have to tighten up their transition defense a little bit. I like playing inside out of the zone, but now Notre Dame's in man. So we're going zone on makes, man on miss. 
And he's guarded by DeWolf. Baldwin smacked it to keep it alive, and it is Notre Dame basketball. When we come back, we are all tied up at 12. Hidalgo, the freshman, all five, six of her pulling up, sticking to triple. She's crafty off the bounce as well. How about Madison Hayes? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Back at the ACC Championship game as we take a look at today's Need to Know, brought to you by the USPS ground advantage in the tournament history for these teams. A slight caveat as Notre Dame just got into the regular season the first time 2013-2014 and uh, Debbie, as you know, well know, playing for NC State back for uh, Kay Yao. A lot of appearances for the Pack. Yeah, five championships for Muffet McGraw and Notre Dame and of those seven for NC State, four of those belong to Kay Yao, three to Westmore. They won three in a row. That was break broken up last year with the win by Virginia Tech. Westbelt just took her first shot of the game. It's the, been the big two so far for Notre Dame. Citron and Hidalgo accounting for all 12 points. Tough shot for Westbelt. Marshall gives him another offensive board. Hidalgo couldn't get it. It's off of Zoe Brooks, the talented freshman who has just checked in. There she is, number 35 for the pack. All the starters for NC State have scored except for River Baldwin. And Zoe Brooks comes into the game for NC State. That gives him another ball handling guard, another scorer in the backcourt. And she forces a turnover. Yeah, good job defending the flex cut on the out-of-bounds play. State has missed six of its last seven shots. I think you've got to play inside out a little bit, Pam. You know, get the ball inside to River Baldwin. She's a willing passer out of there, and if she does, draw a double, someone else will be open. She's only taken one shot so far. Brooks looks back to Coach Moore to get some instruction. Shot clock at five. Zoe out to Hayes. They need a shot. It's going to be Rivers. It would have counted had it gone in. Well, that's part of not having a natural point guard on the floor, except for having a freshman point guard on the floor with Zoe Brooks. Notre Dame's missed four shots in a row. Westbell trying to get going. That's a tough take, trying to take the ball to the rim on James. She's a good defender. Brooks, oh my. She was fouled. Joe Vasili, Mai Forsberg, and Dee Kantner, a veteran officiating crew here. That is the first foul of the game. That's nice, seven minutes and 45 seconds in. KK Bransford picked up the foul for the Irish, who are playing very short-handed today. Kylie Watson got hurt in the third quarter yesterday in the win over Virginia Tech, her left knee injury, and that's what she brings, a very good rebounder. And she will have an MRI tomorrow. Becky Abinma, who is a backup forward, also continues to be out in concussion protocol. So they're down to seven players in uniform today. One of them, Sarah Cernugel, is a former walk-on who just got a scholarship last August. Well, it definitely affects the Notre Dame depth. It forces Marshall to play extra minutes. They kind of split minutes. And, but Marshall is uh, more of a, a rebounder, an offensive rebounder. And uh, Notre Dame's post player, Kylie Watson, not available today, is more of a scorer on the block. She's a bigger body to match up with River Baldwin. And Marshall at 6'5". Another slight frame. She's going to have to play a whole lot of minutes, if not all of this ball game. If you move the ball quickly, you will get numbers on, against the zone. That's a travel by Rivers. So the ball goes back over to it's Notre Dame. Just a second turnover, excuse me. Pam, NC State looks like they're hesitating a little bit against the zone. I still think they're playing on top of the floor. They need to get below the free throw line and try to collapse the top part of that zone so they can get some open looks from the middle third. Oh, 
Hensford breaks the scoring drought. Notre Dame had gone over three minutes without a bucket. That's KK's game right there, putting it on the bounce. And a hell ball. Possession arrow, Irish. The NC State's not connected right now on the offensive end. They just look hesitant, a little disjointed. Got off to a good start, but now they've gone almost four minutes without a field goal. Matty Westwell has a size advantage against Madison Hayes, but Hayes is one of their better defenders. See, they're trying to take advantage of that post-up opportunity right there. Marshall left open, short. Rivers comes up with the rebound. Quickly got it, tried to get it up to James, but Hannah Hidalgo, who is all over the court, is able to knock it away. Hidalgo first in the entire country, averaging just under five steals per game, was the defensive player of the year and the freshman of the year. And along the way, set a Notre Dame freshman record for points, also an ACC freshman record for points, held for all of one year, broke Tania Latson's mark. Oh, beautiful fake, but she doesn't finish it. A little hezzy, high off the glass. Citron going left, drew attention. Hidalgo open, missed it all. Now James, defended by Citron, waits for some help. Baldwin. Yeah, that's a hold out there on Westbelt. First on Maddie. And River Baldwin is doing a really good job of running the middle of the floor and getting some position inside. It's really important for her to get to the rim. Just the second team foul. So we're inside 30 seconds to go. Baldwin against Westbeld knocked out of bounds, no foul. Wow, this is a, a tough one right here for River. I think she gets a little bit of a hook action right there. Westbelt, that's definitely a foul. Brought both arms down. Yes. So a break for the Irish and Ivy gets her out. Baldwin guarded by Marshall this time, rolled it in. Her first points. State back on top, shot clock off for the Irish, waning seconds of the first quarter. Look at James in a stance. She's telling Hidalgo, I'm gonna make you go left. And I could not get a shot off in time. NC State with a one point lead after one quarter at the ACC Championship. River gets to that left shoulder through the contact. NC State with the lead. You are watching the ACC on ESPN. Championship Sunday, NC State with a one point lead over the Irish. Notre Dame has had great success in this tournament. They've won five of them, the last one coming in 2019. Neil Ivey still looking for her first title as the head coach. And here she is with Angel Gray. Coach, NC State had an efficient start, but then close out the quarter going two for 11 from the field. How would you assess your defense to this point? Yeah, I thought we settled in a little bit. I thought they got hot early. Um, just trying to find good offense and transition. So I thought we did a good job of settling when they started off fast. When Hannah and Sonia started off with your first 12 points, you went through a drought of your own. How do you free up your offense a little bit? Yeah, we need to get stopped so we can run and transition. That's what we're, I think we're at our best. Um, but Sonia got us started really well and trying to get Hannah and Maddie going as well. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Yale's got her ACC tournament voice going. You can tell she's been talking uh, <laughs> at a high volume for several days in a row. Good resume here. Uh, the highest net, actually, of any team in the ACC. Yeah, this is excellent right here. The, U the win over UConn definitely bumped up their net. And playing in this league as the four seed, and here they are in the title game. That's how good the league has been. It's been incredibly balanced all year. It's been a tough win, and Virginia Tech did win the regular season this year in the ACC. Notre Dame took care of them yesterday without Liz Kitley, who is out for the ACC tournament at least. Citron able to chase it down. Right now, Charlie Cream says that Notre Dame will host in the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament. 
Selection Sunday a week from today. Both of these teams with uh, huge wins uh, yesterday, so I don't expect fatigue to be an issue. Both teams playing their third game in as many days. Citron and Hidalgo accounting for all but two of Notre Dame's points, and NC State has cooled off considerably after a hot start, but still they have the lead. It's not like Notre Dame's lighting the world on fire either. They're shooting just 33%. Timeout taken by Brooks after she couldn't find any options. Marshall, by the way, called for that. Notre Dame foul as we take a timeout in Greensboro. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement and benefits plan that works for your team. All right, let's watch this out of bounds play, Pam, because this is what Westmore is upset about. Here's the screen for her to come around. Mimi Collins sets the screen, okay? And River, Sanaya Rivers is going to come over here. Now watch. Notre Dame guards the first action. Now look at NC State. Everybody's cutting away from the ball. Nobody's coming to the ball. That timeout might matter in the fourth quarter when he wants to advance the ball. Keep an eye on that. State up by one. They have missed 11 of their last 13 shots. Notre Dame has missed nine of 10. Another miss, Hidalgo. Got run into by Hayes, who picks up her first foul. Westmore, as you can see, probably saying things like that, gum it, because yeah. that was not a good <laughs> series down there on that side no, of the floor. It wasn't. The, the poor execution on the out of bounds, forcing the timeout. Then you come off the timeout, and you get a tough three, a contested three. And then the foul. Westfeld has had trouble. Navigating space. That would be a flop, which they don't like to call. Sonia Citron breaks the drought for the Irish. She has 10 of their 17 points. The zone is designed to make you dribble on the perimeter, and that's exactly what NC State is doing. You gotta pass it. It moves the you can move the ball faster by passing it. James able to get a follow. That's a, incredible athleticism right there. Might have gotten away with a walk on her first move to the basket. Now, look at James overplaying Hildalgo past the midline. That's how much they want to make her go left. Hildalgo five points, two of five from the floor. <laughs> Citron knew that was short. Sonia Citron has got the hot hand. She's got a couple of triples here for Notre Dame, both from the deep corner. Look at the penetration. You don't help off the strong side when you got a great shooter in the corner. And then James, athleticism. I don't know how she snatched that one out of the air, but that's a great finish. <laughs> she is a tremendous player. Westfeld, catch, shoot, short. James with the board. NC State needs to up their tempo. They're much better when they're accelerating, not just up the floor, north and south, but east and west in their quarter court offense. Baldwin got a good look at it. Both teams shooting around 33%. Hannah, nope. Rebound falls to Collins. They left Brooks open. I mean, Brooks is a 22% three-point shooter, but she's capable on a catch and shoot. It was a really good pass by Rivers. Zaya James with the foul. And on this play, see that right knee kind of got caught up a little bit. So Madison Hayes is on the NC State bench. Madison Hayes told me before the game, she did announce on senior day she will be returning next year. Good news for the Wolfpack. Absolutely. James almost forced a turnover. Marshall couldn't get past the wall of River Baldwin. Good job of being in the gaps that time and keeping the ball on the left side of the floor with Hidalgo over there. Low turnover count so far for both teams. Well, we like that. Low point total. We, we don't like you that. You especially don't. 
tipped by Citron, picks it up herself. You know, Ivy said she'd like to see her team get more points in transition, but State's done a good job of getting back. Good job of making her see layers. She's not seeing a clean, straight driving lane, and that's a good job by NC State. Hidalgo has the ball in her hands for a long time. Brooks, what a rebound. Well, really good. Freshman Hidalgo and Brooks, she got bottled up, but found Collins who was fouled. Well, that's one on four right there. I think Westmore is going to say, Zoe, come over here. Let me tell you something, Zoe young one. <laughs> Hidalgo picked up her first foul. There's Mimi Collins at the free throw line. Champ Week rolls on today with two more women's title games, LSU and South Carolina in the SEC Championship follow up, following us, and USC Stanford, wow, in the Pac-12, two terrific games. South Carolina, the epitome of escaping that win yesterday against Tennessee. Yeah, that was an interesting finish to that game. Very interesting. I'm sure we don't have time to talk about it right here, but I love the way Neil Ivey was building confidence in Hidalgo, her freshman. And during that free throw. Now they have several conversations. Brooks over to talk to Coach Moore as well during that time. Shot clock is at five for Citron. They need a shot from Westbelt. She looks at the clock, steps through, and hits it. Good contest. Great shot. Now Westbelt also Pretty calm out there. The veteran, she also has the option of coming back next year, has not made an announcement. Irish are hopeful she'll come back. I mean, who wouldn't want to play with Olivia Miles and Hidalgo in the backcourt next right. year? Olivia says she's coming back. Ball goes to Notre Dame on the held ball. This is just good defense by Baldwin. She needs to stay on her feet, though. She forces her to make an extra dribble. And then nice step through by Maddie Westbelt. There's Olivia Miles making the announcement through her head coach that she will come back next year with Notre Dame. There's been all sorts of speculation. Hidalgo hammered, and Hannah will get to the free throw line for the first time today. And the first time she's seen a straight line to the bucket. You have to build layers against a player like her that is so good off the bounce and so shifty. You gotta make her keep thinking instead of letting her react. Baldwin with the foul. <laughs> Anna Hidalgo winning the Rookie and Defensive Player of the Year award. You see third in Division I, only Caitlin Clark and Juju Watkins scoring at a better pace. Most steals in Division I. And certainly up not just for National Freshman of the Year, but she's an All-American, period. Yeah, I, I think she is. I think there are three All-Americans out of the ACC this year. Kitley, Amor, and Hidalgo. Cannot argue with that. Brooks, nice, but couldn't finish. Westfeld able to come up with the miss. And of course, Kitley and Amor are the Virginia Tech players. They were bounced yesterday by the iris that goes up and over the backboard. I mean, the percentages right now that Westmore is playing have worked. Every time they've made her go left, except for that straight line drive, even when she pulls up at the nail, that's a shot that she would make eight out of 10 times. But they're making her think. What's at stake? Well, the championship and Notre Dame looking for its sixth title since it joined the league in 2014. State going for their fourth in five years. State is on a drought now. They've gone four minutes without a field goal. And that ball never gets off the top of the zone. Rivers, nope. It's a good job by Neil Ivey. They're short without Kylie Watson because of the injury, and they go zone. Brooks, behind the back to, to James with the finish. The stylish assist for the freshman. Well, that gets everyone in red off their seat. 
a lot of red in here today, Pam. And she stayed about an hour and a half away from Greensboro. So a lot of Wolfpack fans on hand. Shot clock at five for her doggo. She just noticed. Hannah off balance. Here comes Brooks. Citron stole it. Frantic and frenetic right now at the ACC Championship. Bransford, long two. Yeah, that's not a good shot right here. You got to make the defense work. Brooks settles as we hit three minutes to go in the half. I don't know many coaches that are fans of uh, pass off a shot off the first pass. Here comes a step up screen. Shot clock winding down. Collins missed everything, but Baldwin got it. However, shot clock violation because the shot didn't hit the rim. They go step up screen to clear it out, but Mimi Collins cuts to the baseline. And this is a great play right here. Just a beautiful feed. The right pass at the right time. Good finish by James. Nice behind the back. Perfect pass, kind of chancy going behind the back. If it was off the mark, Westmore might not have been so pleased. I think that was actually very fundamental by Brooks. Something that she's capable of doing. Marshall on the baseline. Her first basket. Getting the start for Watson out with a knee injury. And Marshall gets some attention now. And Marquez, the veteran athletic trainer, takes a look at her chin. Hidalgo's well, we got to go gonna, look at it. Yep, Hidalgo's going to check back in, pardon me. Sorry, Pam, but, it, you know, they got to look at it because there's blood and there's contact above. The last play is under review to the see if there's any yeah, unnecessary. Above the shoulders. She just ran Good. into James. Yeah, it looks like she ran into her face, honestly. Yeah, that's just that's just incidental. incidental. This contact. won't take long. I'm sure the pain is an incidental for Marshall, but the contact certainly was. This should not take long for Dee Kantner and Joe Vasili over there at the monitor. We also will make sure the clock is where it should be. Gives both coaches a extra timeout. Low scoring game. And they, they got it right. Saying there's nothing there. They just run into each other and collide. So we play on, 25 seconds to shoot. James inbounds to Brooks. Number three, you have Hidalgo on transfer right here. Hidalgo checked in for Marshall. And she gets her chin attended to. to go in the first half. Brooks recovered. This zone has really taken NC State deep into the shot clock. Under five seconds. Rivers for three. Miss. Good block out by Citron to keep Collins away from the board. Citron with Rivers on her and said passes out to Hidalgo. And Hidalgo, seven points so far in this game. Two assists. She had none the first time they played in the regular season. Brooks with the board. That was risky because Mimi Collins went underneath that West Belt screen. NC State has missed 20 of its last 24 shots. Missed everything. That was zoned by Notre Dame, and 
Wes recognized it, tried to get a play in. I'm not sure if his team recognized it. Bransford gives Notre Dame its biggest lead of the game at five points. NC State has only scored five points in this quarter. Brooks finds a little seam and hits. I love that the officials are not calling flopping on either side today, because we've had some. About five seconds or so difference between the two clocks. Neil Ivey wants to talk it over. We'll take a timeout as well. See you in 30 seconds. Welcome back, waning seconds of the second quarter. We look forward to checking in on site. The game day crew is here. Yep, that's Andrea Carter. We got L. Duncan in the house and people all over the country checking in on this very exciting championship Sunday in women's college basketball. And LSU, South Carolina after us, and after that, USC and Stanford. So just sit there and watch great basketball all afternoon long. Juju Watkins, Ooh. the other great freshman, dropped 52 on Stanford the first time they played. Can't wait to watch that one. So Wolf back to Hidalgo, five on the shot clock. Hannah, Bransford, they need a shot. They get it from Hannah. Right before the shot clock buzzer went off. And NC State didn't take the ball out of bounds with 4.5 on the clock. And they don't get an opportunity for a last possession. So out of the timeout, Notre Dame hits. She gets lost in the shuffle. NC State loses communication. Hidalgo wide open for a triple. Excellent play call by Neil Ivey to end the half. So Hidalgo into double figures with 10 points, gives Notre Dame the 28 to 22 lead as we head over to Angel Gray with Sonia Citron. Sonia, both teams have had to scratch and claw for points in this first half. It helps when Hannah Hidalgo hits a buzzer three, a buzzer beating three. But how can you build more of a rhythm in the second half? Yeah, um, I think we just have to slow things down, really use screens, um, and just attack, attack to the basket and kick out just just be slow it down a little bit. I think we're rushing and yeah. <laughs> On the defensive end, you've only given up seven points in that second quarter. What do you like about that end? Yeah, uh, I love that. I mean, I think that shows that we're being really aggressive on defense and we're focusing on the right things, which you love to see. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. NC State just two of 10 from the floor in that second quarter. Something to celebrate for the Irish fans for now. That's it for the first half. Time now to go to our game day crew. It's Andrea Carter and L. Duncan, and they are in the house in Greensboro. These are all big facts. Welcome to your halftime report. From courtside here at Greensboro Coliseum, I am the aforementioned L. Duncan. She's Andrea Carter. You heard Sonia Citron kind of hit on what Pam and Deb were talking about. A lot of frenetic energy in this one, but also exactly what we said, strength versus strength. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. And we started right there with Sonia Citron. She's so smooth. She's so She's incredibly so smooth. smooth. Right here, she makes the three-pointer off the assist from Hannah Hidalgo. Yeah, I mean, and Hannah Hidalgo, this is where Hannah Hidalgo gets the ball to the inside. It's a kick back out. There's patience. You drive, draw the defense in. You never want to help off a strong side corner, especially with Sonia Citron in the corner. It is a death sentence. She's going to make you pay every single time. And how great has Isaiah James been? Getting into the paint, that is a tough shot where she gets her own rebound, not giving up on the play. That's what it takes to win a championship. Yeah, Isaiah James with eight points there, and we just saw Ooh, not oh, pictured here. And Hidalgo, 10 points in this one. That matches her entire total from the yeah. last time they played. But we mentioned the strength versus strength, Notre Dame's ability to score, and, of course, NC State's ability to stop them. What's standing out to you the most after the first half? Well, I love that the game crew got Sonia Citron to do the interview because she just plays with so much poise. NC State, we talked about their strength is defense. We'll get to that highlight in just a second but for Sonia Citron she carried them as far as efficiency goes in that first quarter and really until late in the second quarter when Hannah Hidalgo started popping off the efficiency of Sonia Citron is what really impresses
impresses me the most. Her leadership, the way she doesn't get sped up. She's so patient. She's so poised. She is a true leader of this team. I've always loved her game. Efficient and it's smooth. And when you talk about efficiency, four of eight from the field. Tough pull-up jump shots. Her mid-range game, she can score inside and out. She is one of my favorite players to watch, and she anchored them offensively. And she's the hustle plays. Three steals. Yep. We talked about the 10 points. Three steals there, including a really important one. Uh, Notre Dame, by the way, 20 and 0 when leading at the half. Uh, all right, we're getting ready for second half action here and also a couple of more big games on the slate. SEC Championship on the way and then the Pac-12 Championship will cut it. But again, there she is, Sonia Citron, doing a little bit of everything for the Fighting Irish. Sonia Smooth Citron. Get it right. That's her middle name. It's a lot Smooth. of alliteration. That's exactly what she is. I like that. Sonia Smooth. But of course, the completion of this game still on the way as we get you set for second half action here from Greensboro. Notre Dame and NC State looking for their fourth title in five years. Isaiah James with eight. Pam and Deb on the other side. You are watching ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal as we welcome you back to the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. The big three for Notre Dame scored or assisted on 26 of 28 Notre Dame points. Hidalgo and Citron have 10 points apiece. And the most important statistic, Notre Dame is up 28-22 at the half in the championship game. Pam Ward along with Deb Antonelli. Angel Gray is with us as well. I got another read here. Today, time for today's expert moves, Debbie, brought to you by Principal. <laughs> I'm going to show you some, Pam. This is what you're going to see right here. Watch how NC State defends or, or scores right here. They've got cleared out the whole side to go two-man naked side. Ball screen offense, really good right here. This is execution is what they're going to need more of in the second half. James with a pull-up jump shot on a switch. Now, Notre Dame has Hidalgo trying to force her left. So the screen comes, she rejects the screen. There's a switch. Mimi Collins is on Hidalgo. Now watch what happens. Mimi doesn't stay with her. Hidalgo slips out to the three-point line and drills the triple right at the end of the half. And then NC State, you see the clock, four seconds goes off. They didn't even try to get the ball back in bounds. Angel Gray had a chance to speak with Westmore. Angel? Yeah, Westmore was not thrilled that his team only scored seven points in that second quarter. He said the Notre Dame zone is really giving them some problems at this point. He asked for them to attack. He said, we're standing around. We're not making any aggressive moves. And we're a short shot clock at 10 seconds. He said, we have to find a way. If we don't get the first one, at least create some second chance opportunities asking for more of that attack mode in the second half. Yeah, Angel, they got to get the ball below the free throw line. When they stand on top of the zone and dribble, that's what Notre Dame wants them to do. Notre Dame dictated all of NC, St NC State shots in the second quarter. NC State's got to dictate the shots they want here in the second half. Trying to get Luther Baldwin going because in the first half, she was just one of six from the floor. Maddie Westfeld also the other... Down low player, one for six from the floor with uh, two points for the Irish. Here I'm, she is. I'm expecting a heavy package of Maddie Westbelt here in the second half. She Not missed. surprised to see her get the first attempt. Good news for both teams. Madison Hayes, who appeared to twist her knee a little bit, number 21 in white, is back out there, as is Nat Marshall for the Irish. She's got her chin bandaged after she got knocked in the chin. Late in the second quarter, Rivers. Well, Sanai Rivers has to find a way to impact this game with her speed and her quickness, and she hasn't done that yet. Citron gets it back to Marshall, left open for the jumper, rolls off the rim. James gives it up to Rivers. NC State looking to tie this game. I love that package that Neil Ivey's going to. Ball screen action in the middle third of the floor. That's where they can do some damage. NC State's really challenged to guard that. This match with DeWolf on Amy Collins asking for the ball, but James took it. Got her own miss. Missed again. Collins hemmed under the basket. Hidalgo gets it back to Westbell. Good hustle to get back in transition by Mimi Collins after she was forced out of the baseline. Hidalgo with 
The shot off glass. It looked like it was well defended, but Hannah has a way of scoring anyway. Three plays for Notre Dame to start the second half. All three in the middle third in that ball screen action. Collins driving on DeWolf. Baldwin over the back of Citron. That's two fouls on River Baldwin. Watch the screen right here. River Baldwin, or excuse me, Sanaya Rivers rejects the screen. And then Hidalgo high off the glass over 6-5. Hidalgo had her worst shooting day of the season in the regular season loss against NC State. A little bit better today. Westbound for three. There's the flare. Westbelt's first three of the game. Gets the lead back up to seven. Or just lead for the Irish. Number four seed taking on the number two seed in NC State. Hayes left open and she buried it. Shooters in the corner, operating in the middle third. This is excellent offensive execution by Notre Dame. Citron floats it. Rivers picks it up. Wish that speed Sinai is known for. Collins couldn't handle it. Look how fast she is. That's what I'm and then was fouled. Watch this middle third ball screen action right here. The dribble handoff right here into the flare screen and then the pop. Watch what happens. Here comes the screen. There's the flare. Nice job of Hildago. Setting that up for Westbelt. And then the skip over the top. Hayes in the deep corner. Now you see a little bit more acceleration, a little bit better body language out of NC State on the offensive end. They had a miserable Second quarter, just two of 10 from the floor. For seven points overall in that second quarter. Baldwin gets in, and another foul. Nat Marshall was called for her second on the previous play. And now Westbeld has two. Sends River Baldwin to the free throw line. Next Sunday, yes, a week from today, ESPN has the exclusive live announcement of the 68-team NCAA Women's Championship field. We'll break down every team and every matchup in each region. Coverage, coverage starts at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN. And the app, that's St. Patrick's Day night. Well, St. Patrick's Day is a national holiday, but the selection show is a national holiday also. Absolutely. Two reasons to celebrate on the 17th. Hidalgo found a little scene. Right now, Notre Dame getting whatever they want. NC State's going to have to up their defensive effort. Baldwin, as Hidalgo comes over, jumped up and got a piece of Baldwin, so Hannah's now got two. So Hidalgo comes and stinks off that screen. She's got options, hers or she has the throwback because Maddie Westbelt is open for three. This time she gets to the nail and she knocks it down. I told you she'd make eight out of 10 there. Collins, quick trigger. Citron came in and knocked it out of bounds. Look how much better NC State's moving the ball. They're not playing off the bounce as much this half. They're moving the ball off the pass, and that's the way you beat the zone. Already with more points in the first four minutes of this third quarter than they had in the entire second quarter. Wilson able to handle and finish. Great pass to the target, away from the defense. Great seal by River Baldwin. One point ball game. Two point ball game, pardon me. Westbelt, another three. Rims it. Acrobatic rebound by Hayes.
A good backdoor cut. Hayes does such a good job moving without the ball. They've done a good job of getting it into Baldwin. She's got eight points in this quarter. What a great job by Westmore in the locker room with his team to change the whole rhythm of the game, their body language, and everything else about the way they're accelerating through their offensive sets. Westbell driving left, got it, and was fouled. Same for Neal Ivey on the Westbell package. It's all Westbell right now. You got to dump out the playbook on one of the best hybrid fours in the country. Off the bounce to the left. Great finish by Maddie. I'm coming for the crown. Yeah, I won't back down. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let's build a retirement and benefits plan that works for your team. Teamwork evident in this game. You saw Nat Marshall with a cut on her chin. She has been patched up back in. And we've got ourselves quite a championship game. Notre Dame up by two. And we expected, Deb, that the big three would do a lot. How about this? Scoring or, or assisting on 89% of the points in this, the third game of the ACC tournament, including on 35 of 37 points today. They will be dangerous in the NCAA tournament. They'll most likely host first and second round, both these teams. And they're both tough at home. But NC State has assisted on four of their five baskets here in the third quarter, so they have adjusted to the zone, and they have done a much better job. Now it's Neil Ivey staying in the zone in this possession. Let's see how long she stays in it while NC State's got a rhythm going. River Baldwin inside. A lot of contact, no foul. Let's go over to Angel Gray. You were talking about the big three for Notre Dame. Well, how about this? This is the highest scoring trio for the program in the last 25 seasons. If you think about the amount of names, the amount of talent that has come through this program since then, and to think that a rookie, a freshman, is Defensive Player of the Year as well as Rookie of the Year leading the charge, it's going to be so much fun watching them going forward. Pam, they are the second highest trio in the nation. The best is Iowa with Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Heavy on the Caitlin Clark, I'm sure. <laughs> Speaking of which, they're playing for the Big Ten Championship today. We've got the SEC and the Pac-12 following us here on ESPN. What a day it is going to be. Westfell with the missed board for Baldwin, who has three personal fouls. That was her fourth rebound. River Baldwin's body language has been more demonstrative. She's showing up, showing her numbers, posting up. Nice off the screen by River Baldwin. Isaiah James in the mid-range. James's first points of the second half. She's got 10 overall. Citron, that was telegraphed. Rivers got in front of it. Sonia knocked it away. We got a foul. You know what, Bam? It is just a matter of time before Sanaya Rivers inserts her speed in her athleticism. In the first half, she didn't. In the second half here, this is an example of how she can use her athleticism and her ability to change the game defensively. The trail official had the foul. First foul on Citron to Wolf. Back into the game for the Irish. Short-handed today, just seven players in uniform. Kylie Watson hurt her knee yesterday. River Baldwin rolling. We have our eighth lead change of the game. This is what you want on a championship Sunday. Citron tries to quiet the crowd. Nope. I don't think Notre Dame's had a rebound in this quarter. James for three. Off the back rim. 
There's one. Citron, perfect pass, but Shania Rivers is there with the block. Here come the pack. Rivers, the height advantage over DeWolf. NC State up three. Timeout taken. The first half, NC State looked like they were stuck in mud. Not here in the second. Sanaya Rivers on the block. And how about this? The pull up over a smaller defender. Now she's cooking. Let's take a look at today's moves of the game presented by TurboTax. Sanaya Rivers, it was a matter of time. Standing around, dribbling the basketball the first half. Not the second half, explosive with her speed and length, using her athleticism to impact the game in multiple ways. Steal, block, and then the pull up Jay. Now she's stuffing the stat sheet on the right side of the box score. First half, NC State hit just 28% of their shots from the floor, including two of 10 in the second quarter. Different story here in the third. They are outscoring Notre Dame by nine. The Wolf working on Brooks, got it knocked away. Citron was able to save the possession, but now she's in trouble and gives it up. James does not have numbers and she's fouled by Hidalgo. The pace was Notre Dame's the first half. The second half is NC State. They were down six at the break. Neil Ivey's team executed so well in the first half. Let's see how long they decide to stay in that zone because NC State is figuring it out. It's still a one possession game. That was also the third foul on Hannah Hidalgo. Here's James at the line. The ESPN NBA Sunday night doubleheader starts with the Knicks Sixers at 7 Eastern and follow that with the Timberwolves taking on the Lakers in LA. Coverage starts at 7 Eastern with NBA Countdown. Stephanie White calling that Lakers-Wolves game for us. James gets them both. Eight, nothing, NC State run. James, great defense on Hidalgo, who's having a, a tough time getting it. We're inside a minute to go in the third. Marshall, no basket, a foul call before Westfeld could get the shot off. We haven't seen a whole lot of high-low out of Notre Dame, but boy, that's a set that they love to run. And good job moving the ball, getting the switches that they wanted, and then taking Isaiah James down to the block. Maddie Westbell. Second foul on James. 20 seconds put back on the shot clock. Hidalgo for three, hits it! As ah, she's falling down. They call the flop this time. Dee Kantner gave the signal to the bench. Cuts the lead to two. Collins passes into Rivers who couldn't handle it cleanly. Shot clock is off now for Citron. Goes to her left, picks up her dribble, needs help, there's a foul. Drawn by Isaiah James, who has drawn the most charges for the pack this season. I mean, Maddie Westbell just runs over her right here. She's trying to get to the basket on a backdoor cut. James positioned perfectly to draw that charge. So now the pack will get the last shot. Rivers short. But the third quarter belonged to NC State. They outscored Notre Dame by eight. They take a 43-41 lead. The last 10 minutes to go here in the ACC Championship game.
NC State, seven ACC tournament titles. They had three in a row, ending in 22. The legendary Kay Yao had a bunch of them. As you take a look at them, over the years, they're trying to get the title back after Virginia Tech won it last year. Here's Wes Moore with Angel. Coach, at halftime, you said that you wanted your team to go into attack mode. River yeah. Baldwin right now with 10 of her 12 points in that third quarter. Yeah. How else have they answered the challenge? Yeah, we're, you know, we're attacking the rim a little bit more. Uh, definitely getting, trying to get post touches or penetrating, get paint touches. So trying to, like I said, be attacking instead of just swinging the ball against the zone the whole time. We want to reverse the ball, move the zone, but we want to attack those gaps and closeouts. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Very successful third quarter for the pack. 10 points alone for River Baldwin. Their net is 16. Charlie Cream has them hosting as well in the first and second round. They also had a win over UConn earlier this year, and they beat Colorado. Both these teams beat UConn in the regular season, and that still helps your net. Absolutely. And NC State, what a story. Pick to finish eighth in this league. And here they are, 10 minutes away, locked up in this fight with Notre Dame for the ACC championship. Pam Moore, Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray joining you from Greensboro. And Hidalgo zips it inside to Westbell, but she's got three NC State players, still was able to get the shot up and in. What great footwork by Westbell. You go to who you trust at this point, Pam, and, and you trust Westbelt and Citron and Hidalgo to make plays. Certainly the big three. That is the fifth tie of this game. River is guarded by Bransford, who is the only bench player we have seen for the Irish. Zoe Brooks, the only one for the pack. There's Zoe. Shot clock winding down. Westbelt comes away with it. Talked about Notre Dame being shorthanded, but Wes Moore has only taken one player off his bench today, and that's Brooks. Bransford. Over to Citron, who lost it to Rivers. Two on one with Collins. Sanaya takes it right at Westbeld, who is playing with three fouls. That's right. Smart play not to give it up once she saw Westbeld in transition. There's that speed and quickness of Saniya Rivers. And also a smart play by Westbell to just let her go ahead and not risk getting a fourth foul. Pack back on top. Hidalgo left open for three. Rebound by Brooks. They're just challenging her by going under that screen and then a turnover by Brooks. Hidalgo always looking for a steal. Citron off. Baldwin board. Boy, I love the way Hidalgo zips that pass into the pocket, though. Citron had a great look. And wide open for Son Sonia. Six rebounds now for Baldwin, who gets the ball, guarded by Marshall. Westbelt comes over to help, but Baldwin is able to finish. NC State only had eight point points in the paint in the first half. That's 12 here in the second. Most of them by Baldwin. Four-point advantage for State. Bransford looking for somebody. Westbell gets it to Hidalgo. Elevates, misses. Notre Dame has gone cold. It, it's interesting that KK Bransford's operating the offense on the top of the floor now, and, and Neil Ivey's getting Hidalgo off the ball. Brooks driving, off the pass! Wow. Straight line drive. <laughs> Biggest lead of the game for State on a 6-0 run. Westbound. Cuts the lead in half. <laughs> yes. Maddie Westbelt. She's not just a stretch four, she's a hybrid, Pam, because she can make decisions and facilitate. She can shoot the three, she can post up. She is so fun to watch. Baldwin. Off the rim. Hidalgo looking over towards Neil Ivey. 
Good defense by James. James says, let's slow it down to Zoe Brooks. The exuberant freshman does get it back to Isaiah. Three, short, box out, rebound, Marshall. And then James comes in and fouls Hidalgo. That's three on James. Sanaya Rivers with a quick pick and then the take. And Zoe Brooks, another straight line drive high off the glass. But then the answer in the deep corner. Westbelt sticks it to make it a one possession game. Westbelt with 11 points in the second half. Only had two in the first half. Drives left, picks it up. Marshall. Really good defense by Maddie Hayes that time. Closing the space on Westbell, not letting her pivot once she got in the paint. Rivers, drove by Marshall. Shot clock, single digits. Great turn by Baldwin. Five minutes left. Hidalgo trying to shoot over Baldwin. Good help. And a foul on Citron going for the ball. Just a second on Sonia. We have a timeout. Notre Dame down by three. A lot at stake here in the ACC championship game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. Pictures of the last time these teams won a championship, 2019 for Notre Dame. Just two years ago for NC State, their string of three in a row. Quite a run for NC State and Westmore. And I mean, this game has been outstanding. Look at the difference for NC State in the second half, shooting 50%. And as you've so, done such a good job of, Pam, is five ties, eight lead changes. You've said that all along. It's been a highly competitive game. Unlike in the regular season when NC State beat Notre Dame handily in South Bend. Baldwin doubled quickly by Citron. Citron hit hard on the court, so it's four on five right now. And Joe Vasily blows his whistle as Citron comes up the court. Well, Citron was involved in the double team on Sanaya Rivers, which is an adjustment coming off the timeout. She makes the pass and she just catches her with a follow through. Just incidental contact. Anna DeWolf comes in for Nat Marshall. And that hurts across the bridge of the nose. So DeWolf in, Notre Dame got with their small lineup. Well, they only had two lineups in this game. Just one player off the bench. It's Bransford. Play Bransford as a driver. But you play her as a shooter. Westbelt missed. Hayes came up with another rebound. So now you know they're going to double River Baldwin. So if you throw it down there, be ready to make the play out of it. Notre Dame being out rebounded by 10. Now 9 as it bounced all the way to DeWolf. DeWolf hit six triples yesterday in the game. Westbelt wide open. Hit it. Westbelt with 14 second half points. Look at Olivia Miles over on the bench. We are tied up with three and a half to go. Rivers, big advantage over DeWolf in height and quickness. Foul call. Every time NC State gets a little rhythm, Westbelt breaks it 
She hits that triple before, and look at the reaction by Coach Ivy. Yes! Anna DeWolf just picked up her first foul. There's two team fouls against Notre Dame, one for State. Brooks might have dribbled on the baseline, and she did. Just the ninth turnover for the Pack. Notre Dame on a 6-0 run. The chance to get the lead back. Three minutes to go. Hidalgo around the Westfeld screen. Daring Bransford to shoot. Instead, she drives. Baldwin blocked it. And it's recovered by Hayes. Got to make a good decision here. Rivers elevates over DeWolf. Here's Hidalgo. DeWolf in transition, waits for help. It's Hidalgo. Contact, no foul, but the basket. What a bucket. With the left. Hidalgo puts Notre Dame back on top. State has not scored for almost five minutes. They've gotten so stagnant here against the zone. They had a rhythm earlier. Underneath, Hayes got it. What a pass. Terrific. Get behind that zone. Terrific pass by Rivers. We're tied again. Shot clock into single digits for Hidalgo. Drives it on Rivers and she hits! Hannah Hidalgo! With 21. Zaya James for the lead, rebound. A couple of Irish players around it. Citron able to get it over to the Hidalgo to settle. We're inside a minute to go. You got to lock up right here. Again, James overplaying Hidalgo, forcing her left. Bransford back to Hannah, guarded by James. Hannah drives left. This time doesn't get it. James on the move, got numbers. Rivers, do it, away. <laughs> nice advanced pass right here. Good finish with Alibago to the left with contact. And then behind the defense, Hayes. And a timeout taken by Niel Ivey. We We talked about the big three for Notre Dame. It's the big two in the second half. Only Maddie Westfeld and Hannah Hidalgo have scored for Notre Dame in this half. They are up two. And there is the reset as we take a look at today's star stories brought to you by Home Depot. Maddie Westfeld only had two points at the half. River Baldwin, same. And look what they've done in the second half. But again, just two Notre Dame players have scored in this second half. Short bench because of the injury yesterday to Kylie Watson. So what do you think is going to happen here, Coach Antonelli? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Coach Ward, here's what's going to happen. NC State's probably going to stay in their man, okay? And Notre Dame, maybe some soft pressure, but NC State has fouls to give. They have one team foul. They have three timeouts. Notre Dame has two team fouls. They have one timeout. So I might see some soft token pressure, but you got to keep Pedalgo in front. You can't let her get open in the open court, and you got to get a stop and rebound. 
I would definitely keep Madison Hayes on wet Maddie Westbelt. That's been the matchup because she is better suited to, to guard her with size and strength. But I also would not let Hidalgo get a shot off here. But look for Citron outside the three. Less than two second difference between the two clocks. There's a foul, as you mentioned, they have lots of fouls to give. Notre Dame has not lost since falling to NC State on the 15th of February. Seven straight wins, and here they are in a gem of a title game. James has four fouls now. Inbound, Westbelt, go for the steal, try to get a trap, and commit a foul if you can't get it, but make a play on the ball. Sanaya Rivers picked up the foul, just her first. So we're up to three team fouls, still one more to give. You gotta be careful they don't slip to the bucket on you. Ransford looking for somebody. Citron able to get it as Rivers fell to the court. NC State foul number 22, Sanaya Rivers. Rivers just picked up her second foul. Let's take a look at what happened over there. See, she's trying to get open right here. She just gets caught. Incidental contact. Unfortunately for NC State, while they were trying to foul, they're not going for the ball to make a steal. Like, you want a foul to get a steal. All right, so Rivers has just picked up three fouls, maybe the three fastest fouls in history, and it's going to put Citron on the line. What do you think of that? She's the best free throw shooter in the league. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand the foul anyway. But anyway, well, you, you, have, you, have, you wanted to foul. That'll, that'll work out. You're down two, they could run the clock out. But Citron, not the person you want. She leads the entire league in free throw percentage. She gets one out of two, so it's still a one possession game. And NC State has the basketball. Certainly, they have capable three point shooters. Do you have to go for the three? No, you don't go for the three here. You're driving it hard to the back end. And to see if Notre Dame stays in the zone. They've been in the zone most of the game. They started in the beginning of the game with a little bit of man. Uh, I would think they'd stay in the zone. Notre Dame has two fouls to give. They do, so, so they might give them. And if you're going to give the fouls, okay, you want to make sure it's on the dribble down, not on the dribble up, okay, because they can get into the rhythm of their shot. A lot of coaches have a different philosophy here about whether you foul. But if you, if you choose to give a foul here, you're going to give it on the dribble down. The second foul would be the one that you would consider if you wanted to put NC State to the line, not to allow the three-point shot. But if you do that, you're not doing that until inside, I'd say, seven or eight seconds. What NC State doesn't need a three, though, Pam. They need, and a direct pass to the block right here would be a play that I'm sure Wes Moore might have in his book. And with the timeout, able to advance it into the front court. Ryers. Or there's the foul, pardon me, on uh, Brooks as Rivers got it in. Bransford, just her yeah. second. And I, Coach Ivy's going, no more. See, I, I, would, I would give that foul, try and go make a steal, though. You know, go for the ball. Rivers again, back to Brooks. Got to go quick, though, because you want to have time for a rebound. James for the lead. Rebound, Citron cradles it. But they gets it over to Bradford. State needs to foul as Brooks runs into Hidalgo. That was a good look at the three. Through the elevator door screens. James has a good look. And then Citron comes down with a huge rebound. Hidalgo at the line with a chance to put this game away. They've missed a couple of big free throws here down the stretch. Citron and now Hidalgo. Big. It's a four-point lead. 
timeout to advance the ball. Citron's free throw a little while ago was the first point scored in the second half other than Hidalgo and Westfeld for Notre Dame. And here they are up four. SEC Championship follows us. It's LSU and South Carolina, but we got to finish on our hands here at the ACC. What a great atmosphere. What an incredible game. What a competitive tournament we've had all week. And right now, NC State still has a chance. I mean, you got to get a direct pass to the block, score quickly, and then foul. You know, Notre Dame has one timeout left. They can advance the ball. And one foul to give. Let's see the way that Westmore decides to play it. If you go for the three right here, you got to get an offensive rebound and kick it back out to the three-point line if you miss. Brooks. Back to Hayes, who sends up the three well short. Box out by Citron, and Notre Dame has done it. Coming from behind to win the ACC championship for the first time since 2019. They were short-handed and were able to take out NC State, holding the pack to only eight points in the fourth quarter. Their eighth straight victory and avenging the regular season loss at home back in February to the pack. What a game. What a win for Neil Ivey. Hannah Hidalgo played great in the second half, and so did Matty Westbelt. It was Sonia Citron in the first half for the Irish. This is a well put together basketball team that's going to have a deep run in March. And I would say the same thing about NC State. Absolutely. They got a chance as well. Both of them playing great basketball right now, and Matty Westbelt giving Kylie Watson a big hug who dissolves into tears. Kylie with a knee injury yesterday. We hope for the best for her. She gets an MRI tomorrow when she gets home. But what a gutty performance for the Irish. They got down here in the fourth quarter. This crowd, what do you say, at least 80% At back. least. But they are, you're right, they've been awesome. Yeah, probably 90%, Pam. I mean, what a game. What a finish. What a competitive second half between two really good basketball teams. Congratulations to Niel Ivey on her first ACC tournament championship. She won the regular season last year. What a great basketball team she has put together in uh, fulfilling the legacy of Coach Muffet McGraw. It was a 12-2 run to end the game for Notre Dame. State missed eight of its last nine shots. And it is a great day for the Irish. Niel Ivey, she's won this tournament as an assistant coach. Now she gets number one as the head coach. What a job for her resilient Irish team. And they have really rocketed up right in the bracket, winning these last eight games, four straight games against ranked teams, and they've beaten them all. And this freshman, Hannah Hidalgo, something special. Angel is Let's go over to Angel, she's got Niel. Coach, you won as a player, you won as an assistant coach. As a head coach now, being able to take home the ACC tournament title, what does that feel like? That is nothing but God, there's nothing but God. All glory goes to him. I'm so, I'm lost for words. It's something I dreamt of, and the fact that it's manifested, I just, I'm so proud of this group. I'm so appreciative of the support, the love, it's just amazing. I'm so grateful, I'm so happy. You told me before the game that in that loss, your last loss of the regular season against NC State, that this team has grown the grit, the synergy with your big three and beyond. What has this felt like being shorthanded? I mean, it just shows the resilience of our team. They have so much grit, so much pride, so much passion. They play for me and I'm so grateful to be able to mentor them and coach them. They can play with a lot of heart and everybody stepped up. So proud of Nat stepping up, KK stepping up. It's just phenomenal, just phenomenal young women. Is Hannah Hidalgo really a freshman? She really is, she really is. 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 She really is.
buckets for her to take the lead. The poise that she showed, the heart that she showed in her first ACC tournament. She plays with no fear. She's relentless, fearless, competitor, competitive, passionate. Everything that you would want in a person and in a guard, in a point guard for sure. I just love her. She does such a great job and she's matured so much. Like she's player of the year in my opinion. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time. We'll grab Hannah just quickly right here. Hannah, when you hear those words from your coach, you said she's my coach of the year. How she challenged you from the first time you walked on campus yeah. to this point. What does it mean? Yeah, it means everything to me. I love Coach Ivy. She's the best coach to me. She's such a player's coach. She means so much to me. I played my heart out just for her. Your heart is what won this title. When you're thinking about wanting the ball in your hands down the stretch, what was going through your mind, the mindset in that moment? Yeah, well, just the ball screen was working. So we just had our big comments at the ball screen and just go ISO and just if they help dish out and if not, go all the way to the basket. Everyone talks about your big three. Maddie Westbelt was unbelievable in that second half, 14 points for her. When you can see her get going, what type of energy were you trying to thrive off of seeing her? Yeah, well, we need everybody on this team to go. And when Maddie's hot like that, we just keep feeding her the ball. I think it's nobody on this court that can stop her. And Sony, too. When Sony's in her run, we just give her the ball. She goes. ACC Rookie of the Year, ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and now an ACC Tournament yeah. title. Not a bad resume. Yes, so much for your time. Thank you. Hannah Hidalgo, what a freshman year she has. And uh, now she's got an ACC championship. I mean, Pam, the maturity is right. That's the key word for this young player because at the beginning of the year, she did a lot of stuff to isolate herself on the court, meaning she had the ball in her hand, she's looking to score. As the season went on, she figured out, she matured, her in intellect got better. Her skill set was always there, but the understanding of the Notre Dame system and the Notre Dame culture is part of the reason why she's had so much success in this system. And another terrific game for Sonia Citron. Some big rebounds in the second half, especially here she is with Angel. Sonia, that's what we love to see, the smile on your face, so stoic throughout the game. But when you understand what went into this season and getting to this point, what stands out the most? I think just the grit that our team has. I mean, we have fought all season. We have battled injuries. We, But no matter what, we just stay together and just look what we accomplished. When you're thinking about Niel Ivy getting her first ACC tournament title, how does that make you feel, knowing that you're a part of that? Um, amazing. I mean, Coach Ivy deserves the world. She worked so hard. So I'm just happy that we were able to give this to her. And when you're looking at the big three, everyone talks about the big three. You establish yourself in the first half as well. As a collective, what does it feel like understanding everything that you guys have laid out on the floor to have these moments? Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. I think, again, it speaks to our team and just the love we have for each other. And we were just playing for each other out there. So it feels great. And it looks fun. Congratulations, Thank champ. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And with this win, I think it's safe to say, Debbie, that we're going to see Notre Dame hosting in the first and second round. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all on NC State as well. And, you know, the game swung when Maddie Westbelt hit those triples. Those were the two backbreakers, I think, for the Wolfpack. And then the couple of turnovers late and poor execution by NC State at the end. But it was a well-played game, especially the adjustments Westmore made at halftime. And then the adjustments that Neil Ivey made in the middle third of the floor with their ball screen offense. Notre Dame only had six players play today. They had seven available. Only five players scored. All but six of their 55 points came from the big three of Hidalgo, Citron, and Westbelt. It's impressive. This league has been great all year. You know, we've covered it all season long. Nine teams should get in. Nine teams have great guard play. And when you have great guard play, you have, an, a, chan uh, have a chance to advance. I can't wait to watch what's next for Hannah Hildago and where her game will go next, especially and next year when Olivia Miles gets oh, back. Watch out for that one. And if you want to see the trophy presentation, that is coming up on the ACC Network. The Nothing But Net crew also will take you through the rest of the afternoon. I think Muffet's going to be in a good mood sitting over there <laughs> on that set. So the SEC Network, or the SEC Network, the SEC Championship game is coming up after us with LSU and South Carolina. For Debbie Antonelli, Angel Gray, we had such a great time this week. We have a fantastic crew, and I'm glad we got a great championship game after a great ACC season. Our crew deserved it as much as we did. Congratulations to the Fighting Irish.
So Notre Dame wins the ACC championship. Here's the SEC. Welcome back into Nothing But Net, and what a finish it was here in Greensboro for the Irish. The phenomenal freshman, Hannah Hidalgo, one of the big three that helped get it done today. Niel Ivey has won it as a player. Now she has won it as a head coach as Notre Dame is the ACC tournament champs for the sixth time in program history. You see the scene after an emotional one as they all celebrated. Only had six players that were able to go today it did not matter this team comes out and gets another ACC tournament championship alongside Kelly Gramlich, Ivory Latta and our Hall of Fame coach who coached so many years at Notre Dame coach Muffin McGraw here with me now coach I want your reaction first on what it's like to sit here and take this all in as your former player has helped them get back it's really an emotional moment for me looking like Neil it's like my daughter to see the success that she's had, the growth of her as a coach, uh, the, the team that has really just responded, the adversity that they've been through. You look at Kylie Watson, you look at everything that's happened to them, and uh, and now to come out with a victory, a championship, first one of many. Coach, you know her so well, and I know that when you left this program, you knew the hands that you were leaving it in. And Neil Ivy, what is it about her that has helped lead this team to another ACC championship? Well, she's one of the brightest stars in the coaching profession right now. She's going to be moving up, and uh, she is really somebody that just she understands the players. Uh, she's a players type of coach. She is great at the X's and O's. Uh, did a super job just making adjustments. I thought the zone was terrific today. Uh, but just so happy for her right now. We're looking at Hannah Hidalgo in the center of that, the ACC Freshman of the Year, the Defensive Player of the Year who's getting to celebrate this. Her first time, Ivory, on a stage like this. <laughs> and she performed like that and lived up to every moment it, after missing that first free throw, too. Came back, composed herself, hits the second one. What are you seeing from this freshman? Lost of words, to be really <laughs> honest with you. This is a freshman playing on a biggest stage. This is the games that you live for. And for Coach Ivy to put that ball in her hands at the end of the game, like, I trust you, go out there and do it. And for her to, she missed the first free throw. And if you see her face, she walked the shoes off, got right back on up there like she was a senior and said, you know, I'm going to knock this down. And for her to play on this stage and only and not, not have one turnover, that is huge. It speaks volumes of her as a person, a player, and I'm going to say it right now, and I will keep saying it to, to the top of my lungs. This young lady is your National Freshman of the Year. Point blank, period, and she stamped it today. <laughs> Completely agree, Ivory Lada. She's also a first-team All-American, and she's incredible. She's incredible what she did here. She scored five of Notre Dame's last six points as a true freshman to seal it, and I thought, Coach, it's really cool to see how proud you are of Neil. because that, I mean, what you've built and now Neil taking it over. And the poise by Notre Dame, down six, mm -hmm. seven minutes to go. This building is rocking with red. And in my mind, I'm thinking it's over. I, I really thought that NC State was going to be able to win the game. So the adversity that they fight through and just the fortitude to push through, you have six players and you're going to lean on what got you here, which is your big three. Westfeld hits two massive three-pointers that gets them right back in the game. And then, as you said, Ivory, you put the ball in the hands of Hannah Dalgo, one of the best players in the entire country, and she absolutely delivers. And not just on the stage, but against this defense. Yeah. Yes. She had no turnovers against this defense. She was a key feature Great. on that scouting report. And Maddie Westfeld, that see her step up like that. But you know what I think it was? They look over the sideline and see Kelly Watson. And they say, we're winning for her. Yeah. yeah. It was an emotional scene afterwards for Kylie as well, who of course couldn't play in this game. She will have the MRI tomorrow. We're wishing her well. As we talk about Hannah's success, third conference tournament game with 15 points, five assists, five rebounds. The only other Notre Dame player in the last 25 seasons with multiple conference tournament games with those numbers is Jackie Young, coach, who was another player who came out of Notre Dame that you got to coach that went on to do great things and did great things for the Irish during her career. As you guys mentioned, not 
just her, though, the big three. They scored 49 of the 55 points for the Irish. You see Commissioner Jim Phillips there on the stage with Angel Gray. We'll hear from her in just a second as Neil Ivy and the Irish are getting ready to celebrate this championship, the sixth ACC tournament championship, and the first since 2019. Let's send it out to Angel Gray with the Irish. Basketball Tournament Championship Trophy wow. and the Tournament MVP. Joining the ACC and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish is ESPN's Angel Gray. First of all, I would like to thank all of the fans for showing up. This week has been absolutely phenomenal, and it's not just the two teams that were left for the title game. I see other teams sprinkled throughout the audience as well. So first, give yourselves a round of applause for investing in women during Women's History Month. I would also like to congratulate the NC State Wolfpack for a great season, a team that is unbelievable. We saw this place packed out in red. Thanks for showing up. We will see them in the NCAA tournament. But now it is my privilege to be on stage with the ACC Commissioner Jim, Jim Phillips and today's winning team, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. It's heavy, we know. It's hardware. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Phillips, for everything that you do and for pre presenting the 2024 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament Trophy. And they were led by head coach, Niel Ivey. You can't get MVP. Your, your team is chanting for that. <laughs> But we just had this conversation. You've won as a player, you've won as an assistant coach, but to get your first your ACC tournament title for yourself as a coach, what does that mean? Woo, it means everything. Like I said earlier, all glory to God. I've been praying for this moment. I've been praying for this scenario, this situation. To be able to come back to my alma mater means a lot. I love this university. I love this university, it's changed my life. I've been here for a very long time, came off of two ACLs, um, you know, mentored by the Hall of Famer Muffin McGraw. I wouldn't be here without her guidance and help. But this team, this team, Olivia Miles, Sonia Citron, they committed to me in 24 to 48 hours. They believed in the vision that I had in this program. And I'm so grateful, because that's where this started. And then this team, I just can't say enough about them. We have had a lot of highs and lows, a lot of adversity, just had some adversity yesterday, and they have battled, they're resilient, they're strong women, and I'm, I'm proud to lead them. Sonia Citron said the same thing. She said, we're battle-tested and we're together. When you think about how this group comes again, yeah, she did say that, look at that. Very nice, Sonia. <laughs> She said it goes beyond the big three, how everyone is together. When you think about how important that is to continue to march in March, right. what does that mean? Yeah, and she's right. I mean, it takes an entire team to do what we're doing from, from our performance staff, our coaching staff, but every single one of these young women behind you, if they're injured there and they're working us out, they're practicing against us, they're cheering, they're doing a lot of things to want the, our players that can't actually participate. So every single one of these young women you see are valuable pieces of this program, and they give so much and contribute so much. It's not the big three, it's the big 12 of y'all. It's all of y'all. Everybody, everybody contributes, and that's what I love about them. Fearless is a good term to describe your team, but one person in particular stands out. Hannah Hidalgo does not play like a freshman. <laughs> ACC Rookie of the Year, ACC Defensive Player of the Year. What a resume now saying the ACC <laughs> tournament title. Having that under her belt, what does it look like just understanding her journey to this point 
and her ceiling is scary. Right. I mean, she's a like fierce competitor. She's always played that way, plays with aggression, just loves to compete. Um, her energy is contagious, and she's just phenomenal. And she's, you know, she's just learning. She's blossom, blossoming, and she's blossomed up in front of her, um, front of us, of the whole world to see. Um, but she's got a lot of guidance and a lot of leadership. Her teammates do a great job of, of helping her um, and enhancing what she's doing, but she plays with her heart, and that's why she makes her so special. Well, last question for me, going back to this game, Maddie Westbell. Yeah. Madison Westbell <laughs> had two points, <laughs> had two points at halftime. Came back and had 14 points. I don't know what the conversation was like, but knowing that you have someone that can lead you, big bucket after big bucket. How reliable was she today? She's been so solid and consistent all season long. She does whatever we need. She's the hardest worker on our team. She's the heart and soul. There's a lot of heart and souls on our team, but she's one where whatever we need, she's gonna do it. She's very unselfish. She's always working on her game. And for her, her senior year, also her, um, Maddie and Nat staying with me when I took over, it just, it's a credit to her work ethics, a credit to who she is as a person. She's an incredible human. Um, and she, I know, we, I kept telling her at halftime, catch and shoot, Maddie. <laughs> um, and then you saw her out here. So she, she relished in the moment and all of our stars rose to the occasion. One more round of applause for head coach, Liel Ivy. Thank you. <laughs> it is now time to announce the most valuable player of the 2024 Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. Yep, all right. Hannah Hidalgo, <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> That'll conclude my time. Thank you so much for coming out. And also, one more time for the ACC champs. Get it together. Great stuff there from Angel Gray, getting to hear the interviews and the emotion, and you can tell what it means to this team. And Coach, specifically, you could tell what it meant to Neil Ivy to be the one getting to lead the team to another ACC tournament championship. She's had so much success, but to have the actual trophy now, to say, yeah, last year they finished first, didn't do as well in the tournament, this year came back and really it was kind of the opposite, to play much better going down the stretch. That's what you want going into March. They're playing great right now, and to overcome the Kylie Watson injury, of course. And look at that picture. You see Niel with her armor on Olivia Miles. We kind of forget <laughs> that Notre Dame came into this season with a lot of unknowns without Olivia Miles. So just the overall coaching job that Niel Ivey has done this season to get this team ready to go and, and build around a freshman, put your confidence in a freshman. And then she mentioned Maddie Westfeld and Sonia Citron being consistent all year long. I agree, but I also think both of them have gotten better this season and are playing their best basketball, really know their roles, and are just thriving right now. It's the fact that she's talking about the adversity that they've been having all season, and he, including yesterday. But the one thing that stood out, she said they stuck together no matter what. And each other, they help each other at practice. They push each other to the limit. And they're the reason why they're the champs today, because of their character, her as a coach, and the way the, um, the players love her, they respect her, and they go out there and play hard for her. So it stands a lot about her as a coach and also the program. The fun they're having right now, yeah. too, is they officially punch that ticket to the March Madness 29th NCAA tournament appearance. They've made 27 of the last 29 seasons and cannot wait to see what this run in March is going to look like for the Irish. But let's show you how it all went down today in this championship game between the four seed Notre Dame and and the two seed NC State going head to head for the ACC championship. First time these two programs have ever met on this big stage. Notre Dame down early, but Hannah Hidalgo tries to fire right back, kicks it out to Sonia Citron for the three. She had Notre Dame's Kelly's first seven points, but NC State has the answer. This game was back and forth all game long. It was truly a perfect title game. Then, NC State cutting that deficit to just one. You see the emotion from all the players. Here's Hidalgo on the wing, coach. That was a huge three to end the half. 
Irish are 20 and 0 when leading at the half. They were able to grab the lead. Then River Baldwin posting up ties the game at 35 all. Maddie Westbelt here, Ivory. Man, Maddie does what Maddie does. Hey, let me get that with the lefty and one. They take the 38-35 lead after the free throw. Then it's NC State up once. Anaya Rivers goes to work. NC State on a 6-0 run. They lead by three. Then Westbelt Kelly. Maddie Westbelt hit two back-to-back -back threes. That was the second one that they were able to tie the ball game up and get back in it. She has 14 second half points there. <laughs> then Hidalgo. Ooh, 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 over Baldwin. I over mean. Six five. <laughs> said, it doesn't matter who you put in front of me. I'm going to go at it. Whoop that in transition. Zoe Brooks, the freshman coach, playing a game right there. Almost a charge. She gets rid of the ball, but nobody's there. NC State in disbelief after that. Then Zaya James has a look. Loose ball, and how about the rebound there, Kelly? Massive rebound and get the ball to Hannah Hidalgo, who ends up making this one of the two free throws. <laughs> I love this moment. And she's, she's on the ground, and she's like, okay, <laughs> let's go. I feel pretty good about what's about to happen. She goes on and knocks down one of the free throws to ice the game away. Notre Dame defeats NC State 55-51 to to win the ACC championship. The big three came up really big in this game. They have been big all season long for the Irish and really stepped up in a big way today. Sonia, that's what we love to see, the smile on your face, so stoic throughout the game. But when you understand what went into this season and getting to this point, what stands out the most? I think just the grit that our team has. I mean, we have fought all season. We have battled injuries. We, But no matter what, we just stay together and just look what we accomplished. When you're thinking about Niel Ivy getting her first ACC tournament title, how does that make you feel, knowing that you're a part of that? Um, amazing. I mean, Coach Ivy deserves the world. She worked so hard, so I'm just happy that we were able to give this to her. And when you're looking at the big three, everyone talks about the big three. You establish yourself in the first half as well. As a collective, what does it feel like understanding everything that you guys have laid out on the floor to have these moments? Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing. I think, again, it speaks to our team and just the love we have for each other. And we were just playing for each other out there, so it feels great. And it looks fun. Congratulations, Thank champ. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great to get to hear from her because as they were talking about who was going to be the MVP and we were waiting, I mean, Ivory, we were like, you could pick really any of the big three to be the tournament MVP. Yeah, absolutely. They both, sh that all three of them showed up. I mean, it was just a great game all around. I mean, they just did what they had to do to get this win because they knew they were short of bodies and they just went out there and did what they had to do. I wanted to say this too. When you cut the uh, net down, you're supposed to cut at least, don't cut one, cut about two or three and take them home with you. <laughs> Is that what you did? Uh, yes, ma'am. Did you learn that the first time cutting it down or after the second or third? Or? No, ma'am, the first time I cut about three of them down and put them in the hat. <laughs> Coach, how many pieces of net do you have? I've got a few pieces. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Nice keepsake. Well, do you mark them so you remember which one was which or you just put them like with that trophy? I put, yeah, I put them with that trophy. You're yeah, saying I'll you put, put them on I'll that put hat? I put them with the hat, yeah. How about this moment as wow. Olivia Miles' coach gets to go up and do it? And look, climbing the, climbing the ladder. Climbing well. the ladder. <laughs> That's what we want to see. She's really been challenging this team, and I know that she's going to be the best player on the other team and make them work hard for the NCAA tournament. But, you know, let's not forget about Nat Marshall. She had to come in and play about 40 minutes, got that shot to the chin, you know, had a little work done on the side, came back in. She worked her butt off that whole game. She really, oh, oh we're going to see Olivia Miles go back. She cut it down. <laughs> Let me go get that net. Let me get that net. I need that. I need that for the trophy case. She's like, okay, I'll go one more time. There she goes. There you go. That time count. So good to see. And as Maddie told us, she's been working with them in practice, running the scout team. Probably was trying to emulate a little Sanaya Rivers, I imagine, in practice. But you look back to the big three. Hannah Hidalgo's the MVP. I think you guys are right, though. It could have gone to Citron or Westbelt. Westbelt was so good throughout this tournament, hit some massive threes for them today. And then Sonia Citron only had 11 points today, but was so good for them in the first two games. Then, of course, did some big things today, had eight rebounds as well. So that big three, 49 of Notre Dame's 55 points. And there's Nat Marshall, who played a big role, KK Bransford, Anna DeWolf. Notre Dame only played six players. NC State only played 
six players. So in the end, not a single Notre Dame player fouls out or even finishes with four fouls. Just a really smart approach to how they handled it. You could tell early on, everybody was just saying, okay, I'm going to give you that one. You, you beat me that time. I'm going to wait and use my fouls a little bit later in the game. And I thought that was a really smart way to play. How about this moment right here as well? Wow. I love that she's getting the net. I do not love to see her on the ladder with the knee injury, <laughs> but you know what? Go for it, girl. Yeah. You got a big moment. You got to do it. It is you a big it. moment. They're, they're, they're not going to let anything happen, as you see. And she was so important for yes. them. In yeah. the Louisville game. That's Kylie Watson. And the Virginia Tech game. She she really was <laughs> playing so well before she got injured yesterday. And we got 47 people around now to make sure. Good. <laughs> Super good. Good. Safe, good. We are going to take care of our girl. As you heard the team talk about how emotional this was, the adversity, I agree, that they've gone through. And then to lose her yesterday, hopefully we get a good prognosis. Going to have an MRI when she gets back to uh, South Bend, they have said. And now we see Maddie West, Belt Ivory, going up that ladder. Yo, it is. In, in this situation, when you see a teammate go down, you just try to play your heart out for that person because you know they was a big part of the reason why you got to where, you, where you're at. And, I mean, it, I, I'm getting emotional for Coach, but I'm also getting emotional for the team just to see how they've really been through a lot. Yeah. They really have, and to see them come together to get this championship, it's like, it's a beautiful feeling. As a player, you just, you just so happy. <laughs> I think it says a lot, y'all, in this era of portal and oh, what yeah. are you doing for me, and I'm going to be the star, that Maddie Westfeld and Sonia Citron, who could be the leading scorer on pretty much any other team in the country, they were willing to let Hannah Hidalgo shine and let her be the leader and let her be the leading scorer because they knew that would be the best thing for the team. And it's just so mature from Citron and Westfield to handle it like that. And you wouldn't see that in every program. That is such a great point. And I think it's such an important one. You have a freshman coming in, getting all the hypes, getting all the attention. You're an upperclassman. You've been there for a while. And you're thinking, hey, wait, what's this freshman doing? Yeah. It's kind of taking the shine off of my game here. And I think at some point in the season, it seemed like they kind of went together and said, we're, we're all in this together. Right. We're going to expire each other. But, you know, you learn those great life lessons in sports, how to handle adversity, how to stick through it, commitment, loyalty. And that's what Notre Dame showed. Got a few more cuts to go before that net comes officially down, but we are going to break away from this because we've got the star of the game, the MVP of the tournament, Hannah Hidalgo, on her way over to join our set. Cannot wait to hear what she has to say about this win, about this moment, and about what is next for the Irish and all of the March Madness. Stand by the tournament MVP, the freshman of the year, the defensive player of the year, Hannah Hidalgo joins us next. Well, it is another ACC Tournament Championship for the Fighting Irish. That moment between Neal Ivey and her phenomenal freshman, Hannah Hidalgo, who came out here and balled out again. 22 points, six rebounds, six assists, zero turnovers, and a piece of the net. Just her first piece of a net in her first championship. And we've got the star of the game, the tournament MVP, Hannah Hidalgo, here with us now. Hannah, congratulations. Congratulations. I know you guys have been through so much adversity this year, yeah. so much adversity just here in Greensboro. To get to stand up on that stage and then see your coach, Neil Ivy, cutting down the net and be a part of it, what's the feeling like right now? It feels amazing. I mean, it's truly a blessing. It's my first championship ever, and so just to be able to win it in such a big moment, it means everything to me. And obviously, I give all glory to God because without him, I wouldn't be able to get any of my blessings. Hannah, you played an entire game without turning the ball over against one of the best defenses in the conference. How does that feel? That's big. I didn't know that I had zero turnovers, <laughs> but that's probably one of the biggest accomplishments is having zero turnovers. Hannah, that How is you know? <laughs> Look who it is. You got that mic? Well, Come Coach, on. we got you a mic. We got you a mic. <laughs> Coach Ivy. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> How are we feeling right now when you get to look down and see you cut that net, you see your whole team standing there, you get to run over and hug the Hall of Famer who was here before you? I mean, I wouldn't be in this position if it hadn't been for this mentor, someone that I love so much. I've watched, I'm here today because I've watched this excellent woman teach me how to do everything. She's been my role model my entire life, and I'm just so grateful, and I'm happy that she's here to share this moment. I'm proud of this university and this team. I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> you can't be having, you can't have us all up here crying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we 
I'm really not a crybaby today. These tears is coming out, but I'm just so grateful. Blessings. I just appreciate everything. Take. What does it mean? This is a freshman. She's like 18 years old or something. And you put you put it in her hands and you say you can do this and you can be my leader. Zero turnovers today. How special is she? She's special beyond words, honestly. Um, she has a heart of gold. She's fierce on the court, but off the court, I call her what I call her sour patch kid. She's sweet. <laughs> She's sweet off the court and on the court. She is feisty. Um, yeah. I trust her. I think that's the biggest thing. We've developed the trust, um, our relationship, but I, I trust her so much. And she's just proven time after time that she can get it done. And I'm just super grateful for her. With all the adversity that you guys have been through, how do you keep it all together? Mm -hmm. Just like, just you as a coach, yes. like, you know, you just go through so much as a coach. Like, how yeah. do you just keep it together? I mean, it's still a work in progress, but I think <laughs> <laughs> meditation, um, yeah. you know, Prayer. just trying to stay centered, trying to stay poised, realizing the bigger picture. You know, I'm living my dream. You know, I'm living in my purpose. So yes. when you're living in your purpose, things like th things like basketball and all the things that come with it, like it just settles you. So yeah. I'm grateful. <laughs> you know, it looked like the team was going to try to pick you up and maybe put you on the shoulders, <laughs> and you were like, "Yo, I got a skirt on." Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah exactly. They know better. <laughs> so when you we talk about Maddie Westfeld and Sonia Citron yes. and and what they've done, and we were just saying this, how they could be the leading scorers on probably any team in the country, right? But they're here with Hannah, and they kind of let Hannah take that mantle and right. do her thing. What does it say about those two and how special they are and the roles they played today? Absolutely. Just that everyone is, um, they accept their roles. I think that's the biggest thing, establishing roles, accepting them. But Maddie and Sonia are special. You know, they're special people. Um, they they don't they, they want the team to win so whatever that takes for the team to win um, they're very unselfish in that way they understand that she's a special player um, they allow her to be Hannah um, but then we found we found a way the last several weeks to really mold that together gel together with everyone's talent it takes a while for that and they've done incredible jobs a incredible job as leaders helping us do that you got a week off you don't even know who you're going to play next. Yes. So, where are you going? I'm going to Florida. No, no. <laughs> no they're getting the time off. Um, they definitely need, obviously, with a shorter roster. So, we're going to enjoy the break, get some rest, and then get back to work. Hannah, Coach mentioned earlier just being poised in the mindset of this team. And you're so poised throughout the game. I mean, you're fighting every time. But then at the end, there was a moment <laughs> where when KK throws it up to you, you're sliding across the fifth floor as you get fouled. And we just see a slow-mo of your <laughs> smile because it's like in that minute, okay, I'm going through to the yeah. line and I have a chance to ice this game yes. away. What were you thinking? Oh, when I was sliding, I was just like, oh, that's game. That's game because they got it foul. And so when we got that rebound, that was such a big stop. And, you know, I was just excited because I saw it was like a couple seconds left. I'm like, I'm knocking these free throws down. Coach, I was like, give me two, give me two. And I was like, I'm going to give you what I can. I'll give you so. one. <laughs> so, you know, I was just excited. It's For such sure. a big stage. And to have the opportunity to win this, Hannah, we talk a lot about National Freshman of the Year. She's already got ACC Freshman of the Year. She's already got Defensive Player of the Year. Coach Ivy, we said that this is the National Freshman of the Year. Absolutely. Tell me what you've seen that we don't see that makes you know this is it. I mean, her work ethic, um, how she's made the team better, um, mm -hmm. taking on such a huge assignment running this team, it's just it's consistently all season long has led us in scoring, led the ACC in scoring. Um, her best games are on the biggest stage. I think that her resume speaks for itself. I agree. <laughs> and I think when you add an ACC tournament title yes. and you see and what MVP. she's doing. And an, MVP. And, an MVP. and an MVP. Thank you. There's a trophy right here. Um, <laughs> Hannah, I learned something new the other day, though, that Olivia Miles has been running the scout team. Oh, yes, she has. And so have you been guarding Olivia in practice? Yeah, How has that she's, been? She's tough to guard. <laughs> she's different. I mean, we, you guys are in for a treat because just with us, with everybody together and, you know, kind of who we're bringing in it's just it's gonna be exciting we're just gonna be such a much better team and you know she's doing a great job of making us better because she's just she's grown and she's gotten so much better coach you talked about it on the big stage but I want to come back to it just the heart of this team and the players that came back to play with you and want to be a part of what you guys are building there to be standing here with the special group that you are six strong today on the court <laughs> what does that mean to you it means everything to me. I feel like, you know, when you have uh, the commitment, the buy-in, um, that's what you're always searching for as coaches. And I feel like I have that with them. Um, like she said, they love each other. I think our culture is really strong. And I'm just grateful and blessed that I get a chance to work with those young women. They're really, they're really special humans. Coach, what were you thinking down six? Seven minutes to go, <laughs> down six. NC State on a bit of a run. You didn't want to call a timeout because you only had two left. Yes. So you kind of had to weather the storm. What did you say to your team? What were you thinking? 
Yeah, I mean, we've been in these moments before. Um, we try to practice these moments, but the fact that we've been in these moments, they understand the plays that I would run to get a bucket is usually what the, the big three is everybody calls them. <laughs> and just whoever's hot, I'm going to go to. Um, and then, you know, late game, I think Han iced this with the late yeah. game flat screen. Um, KK said and with River Ball went on her, so I thought it was um, she did a great job of getting to the rim. But I, got, I call on either one of those three mm -hmm. as, as much as I can down the stretch, and I feel like they all came through at some point. Yeah, they did. What were you thinking, Hannah? Down six, seven Down six. Ago. I mean, we know basketball is a game of runs, and so I was just telling my team, like, hey, we're going to go on our run. They went on theirs, and so we just have to be poised and be calm because we're going to go on our run. Just be relaxed. So before the game, I said, I know what mm -hmm. Hannah's going to do because I said, I know what a point guard thinks. Like, if they ice her, she's going to mm -hmm. snake it. Yes. She <laughs> asked you that. So let me ask you this. this. Was that something that you prepared yourself? I know the team, y'all watch film, but did you go watch film by yourself to see how they play, played yeah. you the game yeah, before? Yeah, we saw, you know, me and Coach Ivy, we watch film all the time. And so we looked and, you know, we kind of see, you know, kind of how they're playing us and how we, how I can be better uh, the next time around and how I can make everyone else better. And so we knew that they were just sending me my left the whole yep. time. And so either I could go all the way to my left or I can come back to my right and get a pull up or go all the way to the basket or even just open it up for some uh, one of the shooters. Yeah, great, great guards think alike. They know it. <laughs> <laughs> my job's done. <laughs> Done. I mean, speaking of great guards, you're sitting next to somebody exactly. who has won three yes. tournament uh, MVPs. Really? Yep. Nobody's ever won four, Ooh. and you just won it as a freshman. Ivory, you want to? And I want to tell you thing along? Please go get it. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I will be honored to 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 watch you play, to see you as a freshman, to do the things that you do. You are my national freshman. Year. I will continue to say it, tweet it, Instagram it. <laughs> I don't even text it out to whoever I need to. Go get it. I mean, it's mm. an honor, and it shows. you who you are as a person and a player. Yeah. So go get that thing, girl. Thank you. I'm, now, I'm, now you got three more, yeah. go get it. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you got more to do in March, too. Yeah. Before we let them go, I know y'all want to get back and celebrate with the team. We got to hear what this means to you, Coach. And I know there's going to be phone calls and text messages afterwards. But can you put in context with them sitting right here what it means for them to win another ACC tournament title? Well, the tradition at Notre Dame that you really started as a player coming in and then the first championship. And I know we, we really got good when you came on the bench with recruiting and starting with Skylar and, and getting her to come. And, and I've just seen you grow as a coach. And it's been so fun to watch the relationship you have with the team. And I, I mean, I couldn't be prouder. I do feel like your mom right now. <laughs> Except I'm not going to go bake a cake for you or anything like that. But I, uh, I mean, I just, I love you. And I wish you more success in the NCAA tournament. I want you to win it all. Yes. Thank you. I love you too. Get that done, Hannah. Yes. <laughs> they are getting ready for their 29th NCAA tournament appearance. They were the regular season champs last year, the tournament champs this year. And we got the MVP, the freshman oh. of the year, defensive player of the year, Hannah Hidalgo. Guys, thanks for spending oh, some time with us here today. So proud of yes. Thank you. Go celebrate in that ACC locker room. I know. Go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great Don't stuff with up. Hannah Hidalgo oh, and with Coach Ivy. As you see the moment where collection. the commissioner <laughs> got to help <laughs> hand off that trophy oh. over oh. to Notre Dame as they are your 2024 ACC champions, the sixth time in ACC tournament history for them. Time to update that one because we got another ACC tournament championship for the Irish. How about this? Taking on NC State today. The four seed and the two seed going head to head tied at 55. Hannah Hidalgo coach. Over River Baldwin. What a great move late in the game. Irish take a two point lead. 40 seconds left. Neil Ivy jacked up. Unfortunate moment here, Kelly. This was a tough situation because Zoe Brooks should have stayed out. If you have a player driving to your side, you stay in the corner. Sanaya Rivers thought she was still there. So 22 seconds left. Wolfpack trailing by three. That three is no good. And how about the rebound Rebound from Sonia Citron? Hidalgo goes down <laughs> smiling because she knows she's going to the line. Able to make one of the free throws, and it is all game there. 55-51, to 51, Notre Dame wins the ACC championship. And with that, we send it out to the podium where Wes Moore and his team talked a little while ago about the game. We just, uh, you know, give credit to Notre Dame defensively. Uh, we just struggled to score the ball and, uh, you know, I thought the third quarter we did a better job of getting attack mode and getting post touches. Um, and then, you know, we just, again, I think we were three for 17 from three at some point against the zone. You know, you'd like to knock down a couple more of those. But um, like I said, give them credit. I'm proud of our team for not only what they've done this week, but overall in the year. Um, 
And, you know, the good news is, uh, even though it's hard right now to think about, the good news is we still have an opportunity ahead of us, and um, hopefully we can take advantage of that. I mean, it sucks, you know. Um, I mean, getting all the way to the championship game and um, obviously losing, um, I mean, it's not a good feeling at all right now. But um, <clears throat> Like Coach Moore said, we just got to refocus when we come back and get ready for the, the bigger one. You know, um, I feel like we have that team right now that we could go really, really far in the tournament. Um, but yeah, I feel like, you know, we just got to refocus and get back to what we do. Obviously, it doesn't feel good right now. Um, I mean, you got to feel it the next few days. And when we come back together, we got to look at the film and see what we're lacking in and take that to heart and change it because we're ready to make a run in the dance. And we've won three games in overtime this year, three for, I think we were three and oh in overtime games. We've had a lot of close games and, uh, you know, they've found a way to get it done. Um, and again, a couple of possessions here or there today were the difference. And as a coach, that's hard because, you know, I feel like maybe I could have done this different or that different and put them in a better position. Uh, you know, but until we watch the film, um, then we'll have a better idea of what we could have done better. Definitely a tough spot to be in, but as you heard them say, there are high expectations for this team coach still the rest of the season. What did you see from, um, from them today, from the Wolfpack today, that they can improve upon to make a good run in March? Well, first, I love the accountability from the head coach. I, I got to look and see what I could have done differently. I'm going to watch the film to see what I could change. Because really, they made some mistakes. That one at the end where they threw the ball away, that was a, a critical mistake, but they played a really good game. I mean, it was just a great game back and forth. Both teams, great defense. Offensively. Offensively, I think the thing they probably have to look at is the three-point shooting. Really didn't shoot it well here at all today. Three for 17. Maybe shoot a few less. You got a great post game inside. Maybe look at some different things you can do against zone offense. Agree with that, Coach. You look at the three-point shooting. Both teams shot 17 threes. Notre Dame made eight. NC State made three. That is a massive difference in this game. But NC State won the rebounding battle. Mm -hmm. They played great defensively. This is a really good defensive team. It was just a few mistakes down the stretch. And then on the flip side, Notre Dame did not make those mistakes. And Notre Dame made plays. Notre Dame only had eight turnovers in the whole game. Hannah Hidalgo had zero, which was huge. But this NC State team, sometimes you can get a little more motivation when you don't win your conference championship. Mm. NC State is also healthy, which is a good sign for them going into the NCAA tournament. I agree with Madison Hayes. I think they could really do some damage in the big dance. Absolutely, and I believe the same thing, too. I got to go back to you, Coach, about the head coach taking accountability. As a player, when you sit there in the press conference and your coach say, hey, you know what? Maybe I could have did some things better. Yeah. It, as a player, you look and be like, and you look at your teammate like, you know what, we good. We're going to be okay because we know, yes, we made a mistake, but it wasn't always on us. You know, sometimes after a loss like this, you make it to the championship game, you worked hard, and you just so down on yourself because you think it's all about the team, me, 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 me. But when your coach says something, it gives you like, yo, we good, okay. We got another season to play, regular season, ACC. Now we got NCAA. We got it. Let's regroup. Not just that, but I think the players go like, oh, he's taking responsibility maybe I should too yes mm. and then they start to look and they say yeah you know I could have done that a little bit better you too. probably also like the other thing that you hear when you hear him say that is like oh man it wasn't on coach it was on us let's like yeah. let's find yes. a way to do it like yeah. this do really was him. us yeah he's saying it so NC State still very high expectations came into the day as a number three seed according to Charlie Cream Continue to celebrate the Irish. Maybe Coach will celebrate like Hannah Hidalgo is on the other side of this break. Can we get her dancing? Irish, get the Irish jig. jig. She owed me a D. Irish jig. Irish Maybe if you would have drawn that picture of her better earlier, yeah. she would have danced. Yeah, what was that? I'm going to need the band. <laughs> <laughs> we can dig up the song. Let's see what happens. Stay with us. Welcome back in to Nothing But Net. You're taking a look at the 2024 ACC All-Tournament first team. A lot of Irish and a lot of NC State on this one, Ivory. Looks a good. Absolutely. I mean, well-deserved to everybody. They went out there, they played hard. I mean, they played hard the whole tournament, so everybody deserved it. Thought the big three would be on there for sure, and you're going to get another NC State player on All-Tournament second team coach with River Baldwin, who is big today. She was. She had a great game today. Whether it was zone or man, she could really go inside and score. Tonight, Latson. 
KK Timpson also had big games. And you see, of course, Georgia Amor as well as Tony Morgan. So that is your all ACC, all tournament team. Right now, we've got to wrap things up here as the Irish win their sixth ACC tournament championship, their first since 2019 when our head coach, the Hall of Famer, was still there. And I have this sign that our friend Ivory made oh God, that I wanted what? to bring back from earlier where it said, Coach, teach me how to do the Irish jig. I'd really like to point out how Please good don't. this picture of Coach is. It's you have your <laughs> earrings, Coach. Like what, Ivory? I did not say that was it's Coach. That was just a fun person. That was just a fun I mean, person? Yes. Wow. Okay. And Coach is very fun. <laughs> The hat, the, the on, hair, Coach, the hair is uh, something. Coach, look, we, we got an Irish me. jig. Come Coach, on, what we, do we have? We got come some on, music. Come on, Coach, you got an Irish jig? We need some music. Come in the front, come in the front. We got to see your feet, Coach. Oh, I don't know. I don't really know how. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 20, good. How you look? Come on, Coach. Come, come on, right there, first. <laughs> oh, my knees is not good. <laughs> I got to hold on in the back. <laughs> you got to hold on. I got a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo! Woo! You're in the Hall of Famer. You got to do it. Congratulations <laughs> to the Winter Games. Cannot wait to see the rest of the March Madness. Go on. Shut it up, Coach. Let's go. Here was a great moment with Miel Ivory and our Hall of Fame coach. What a season it has been in the ACC. We'll see you for all the March Madness. Appreciate everybody back in Bristol for all the hard work. Our crew here in Greensboro, the great host city tournament town. We have had so much fun. The 2024 Ally ACC Women's Tournament Championship goes to the Notre Dame Irish. Congratulations, enjoy Ivory, Ivory. all the March Madness.